Yes, 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 no arguments, yes, do it your way, your way is the best, Kabbalah, do it your way, do it your way, do it your way, yes to your will, yes to your will. Oh, oh, yes, Lord, I will obey, yes, to your will, Lord, yes, to your way, oh, oh, yes, Lord, we will obey, sing one more time, yes, to your will, yes, to your will. And as a family of faith that we not only love you we not only believe in you we respect you we really do Lord we align to your will this is why we're here every time your will will always prevail Lord we declare that you will help us see the excellency of an aligned destiny that you will help us to understand how helpless we are in rebellion. That you will help us to understand that only as we come into alignment with your will would we ever prevail. Tonight we have come, O oh God, and we ask that you grant us wisdom. We have come as a sign of humility, admitting that there are things we do not know. We have come as a sign of humility expressing our desperation for your wisdom. Lift your voice in one minute and cry out for the wisdom of God. Lord, I know if your wisdom works in my life, I will be better than this. I humble myself. I cry for your wisdom. Cry for your wisdom. When your wisdom comes upon my finances, it will be better than this. When your wisdom comes upon my destiny. When the spirit takes over your soul. When the spirit takes over your life. You will be changed His glory will be revealed When the Spirit takes over Holy Spirit Thou art welcome here Holy Spirit Thou art welcome
feed our souls. Give us light. Give us strength. Give us illumination. We believe in you. We are believers in this place. You have gathered your people tonight to bless them. Lord, we declare that we will truly be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please greet someone by your left and right. And please, you may be seated. Especially welcome all those following us online. There are a little over a hundred thousand people following us from around the world. We bless you. We honor you. Thank you for connecting with us in the name of Jesus Christ. For those of us who are here inside and outside, the Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. It's a privilege to be here again bringing God's word. Amen. Tonight my heart is indicting a good matter. Bible says, Yea, I speak of excellent things. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. My heart has been burning to share the things that I'm about to share. And um, the Lord placed it so strong in my spirit. And I believe that tonight's teaching will be the answer to someone's prayer. You don't have to know what it is. Believe me. Say amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The word of God comes to change our lives. We have cultivated a culture of receiving the word of God with gratitude and allowing it, allowing it to change us. Those who argue with the word of God are those who fail in life. Praise the word. The Bible says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. It never said in your life. It is settled in heaven. That's why heaven is the way it is. When you now allow his will to be done in your life, the same way it is in the heavens, then the word will be settled in your life. When the word of God is settled in your life, your life will change like day and night. I keep telling us week after week that we are on a project. God is taking us somewhere. Hallelujah. Many years from now, you will turn back and you will thank me. You will say thank you for having this. Those who think we are wasting our time trusting God are in for a shock. Because the Bible says darkness shall cover the earth. It's a prophecy. It's not a discussion. And gross darkness the people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, tonight's teaching is a response first an instruction from God but then a response to um, quite a number of things that um, or a number of issues that I've seen with people families individuals you know God has given me the privilege of talking and counseling people an average day is a very busy day for me because you have different things to respond to ranging from financial issues, marital issues, destiny issues, career issues, health issues, demonic oppression and um, it gives me a privilege as I talk to people every time because it's an opportunity to learn and see firsthand the practicality of God's word. I have families to comfort them over bereavement and at the same time you are celebrating the birth of someone new are we together now you are watching how disobedience is punishing another and you are celebrating the joy of obedience so you are in between um, experiencing the revelation and the reality of the word of God and seeing the grave consequences that comes when we define our own idea about life I choose to submit to the ways of God in the name of Jesus Christ. So I've had a lot of issues and um, the Lord just gave me a release to really, really discuss it tonight. Please, I want everybody, open your eyes, your spirit. Everyone will be blessed tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. There are two issues I want to start with. Really, I, I, I just um, felt like starting out, um, you can call it the part A, on a little note since um, Valentine is on 
<laughs> Monday or Tuesday. Tuesday. I just thought to start from that angle and then just to contribute something. Not necessarily out of pressure, but I think that is useful. I'm a visionary leader by the grace of God and it's important to respond to people according to seasons. He said, I will give you pastors after my own heart and they shall feed you with wisdom and understanding. Hallelujah. There, there is... I have seen two evils that I believe, if not corrected, will destroy a lot of people. Just as an introduction, that's not necessarily where I'm dwelling, but just to connect with it. There, there is a growing fear that I've seen, especially among ladies, not necessarily koinonia ladies. Um, as I talk with ladies, as I talk with women, I, I'm a bit concerned at the growing fear. As it regards family life, most especially, the fear of disappointment, the fear of expectations not coming to pass, then on the other side of the pendulum, I have seen a growing sense of frustration among men, especially young men. Are we together now? So there is on one side fear, the fear that many ladies may never enter into their desired destinies. Fears ranging from the, the projections of late marriage fear ranging from not finding a man that represents God, God's ideal standard. So there's, there's a lot of fear. It's like the average lady is afraid. Even those who are married are afraid. So it's a very interesting situation. Then on the other hand, you have men who are frustrated. I have seen brothers, some in Koinonia and some around that I've been able to see you know, there's something frustrating when you've done your best and it still doesn't work. You know that state. There are people who are standing and saying, look, I don't know what the key is, but I have to find this thing. It's not working. So, I see a lot of frustrated people. People call me, Apostle, do you know my wife just gave birth? And let me confess, things are bad, bad. Nigeria is bad. My life is bad. My boss is bad. And... I just cried before God and I thought that it was very important to respond to this. There are so many people who are afraid of getting into relationships, afraid of getting married, so much. And so God will help us in the name of Jesus. Ladies, I want to talk to you first. Pay very close attention. I really want to talk to you from the depth of my heart. If anyone is distracting you this night, just know that that person is really an enemy of your destiny. There is a reality we have to come to terms with. Look at me, please. And I'm very serious. I know there will be a lot of laughing, but just laugh and let your spirit be here. Praise God. The 21st century living, please pay attention. Living in the 21st century alone is a challenge all by itself. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Just being alive. I know that we have taught and people have said it that we are the most fortunate generation. I believe that. But at the same time, there has been no time in human history, I tell you, where living has come with circles of challenges like our generation. Just being alive alone is a challenge by default. Are we together now? This is very, very important. And that means there must be an updated redefinition of concepts. Listen to me. Ideas. Redefinition of paradigms and strategies. As regards living. As regards family life. Not necessarily a veering off of God's standard. But a redefinition of our approach. Are you getting what I'm saying now? What you call a man in the 21st century is very different from what was understood by a man in 1960s and 70s. Is that correct? 
Yeah. So if we do not adjust to these redefinitions of concepts and ideas to be able to stand the times that are coming, there will be big disasters in Christian homes, although born again, although tongue talking and many lives we are going to raise all kinds of children who will be hooligans and a nuisance to society i have observed personally now and if there are we, we have a number of children here some very small some maybe in their teenage but i have observed with shock most young people from within the ages of let's say 19 down to 13 that generation has been violently captured by the devil. That 19 to 13, I don't know what happened to that generation of young people, but there is a disaster. They are, they are outspoken rebellion against the things of God is beginning to reproduce the pattern of the American church. Are we together? Yeah. You study children, most of them are just finishing from secondary school and maybe universities and all of that they are outspoken rebellion against the life of god the ways of god they are really the technological generation that that teenage and if there is no redefinition of concepts and ideas there will be a very serious challenge the average christian parent does not even know how the concept of parenting because it has changed Back in the olden days, the parents were the principal instructors of a child. But right now, the average child has many teachers. Are we together? The school teachers are just one. The parents are even the least. There are many other things. There's Facebook to teach. There's YouTube to teach. Are we together? Gone are the days where you can, you can off a television and say, sit down and read your book. You off a television, he switches it on on his device think about that the advancement in technology is a double edged sword it's made certain destinies and created potentials for the destruction of others so I, I really would want to talk to us um, ladies let me start with you there are certain things sisters I love you and I'm speaking to you from the depth of my heart if you listen to me you will be saved if you are stubborn and you don't listen I guarantee you you would have defined a path that will lead to tears are we together now say amen sisters here doesn't mean people who maybe ladies who are not yet married it, just anybody really there are certain things a lady must find in a man otherwise don't marry him. Write it down. I've upgraded my curriculum on this. You will, you will be interested to hear the things I'm going to tell you now. A thorough upgrade. Just four things. I've summarized every cry of every sister to four things. Whether you know it or not, just believe me. Any brother that does not come along these lines is dangerous. Sisters, what did I say he is? Shout it. I didn't say he's bad. I said he's dangerous. I don't care whether the brother is Joshua Selman. I don't care whether the brother has a Bible on top of his head. If these four things are not in place, your home will be a disaster and your children will be a disaster. Ready? Number one. You have no business talking about relationship and marriage with any man who is not God fearing don't be too fast allow me to properly define what I mean by God fearing ne notice I didn't say born again because that thing has been abused in the 21st century a born again brother is not one who came out for altar call and you witnessed him raising his hand that's not born again God fearing the primary reason why society is in decadence listen to me is because the men are not God fearing the fear of the Lord is not believing in God there are two different things faith in God and the fear of God are two different things I can have faith in God and not fear God are we together now yeah there are many faith filled Christians who are not God fearing and listen, look at this. 
I am a Christian. I am a child of God. My life is governed by a reference. Listen, the Bible is my reference. Are we together now? My decisions are made with respect to this reference. So, when you tell me you are a husband, what reference are you leading your life and your family with? So many people come to church, but there is no reference upon which their lives, their ideologies, and their decisions come from. So they just hilariously come up with concepts and ideas about parenting and they have destroyed the lives of innocent women. There are many women in the last two weeks, the number of married women have had to counsel and the pain that the average married woman, woman goes through in their home is unbearable. They laugh in the open but they are dying in the secret. And the sad thing is that most of the men are born again. Some are even bishops, priests, sincere people, deacons. What does it mean to be God-fearing? To be God-fearing, number one, means to have reverence, respect for God. Not just to believe in God, but to have reverence for God. Let's hurry up. Number two, to be God-fearing means to submit to the ways of God. Submit to the word of God as the final authority in all matters. Write this one down. To submit to the word of God as the final authority in all matters. Not some matters. You, so you don't mix the word of God and culture. In our place, this is how we do it. No. In our village, this is how it is done. This, this diversity of concepts has largely destroyed many good men. Turned them into beasts and animals because there is no centralized scripture-based reference upon which their activities are carried out. Listen, let me tell you something. There is no man that is bad. When they tell you a man is bad, when a woman looks at her husband, when a young lady looks at someone she's in a relationship with and says you are bad, there is, the concept of bad does not exist. There is no man who is bad. Every man is like a video playing out his mindset. It is the thinking, the ideology of a man that expresses him as bad. That is why an umbrella can carry the same body and in two years, the armed robber has become a pastor. The body did not change. Something changed. The same hand that once held a gun and was brutal over people now holds a Bible and is saving sinners. There is nothing called a bad man. I've interacted with some people who are supposedly bad. Some of them old enough to be my parents and I've discovered that intrinsically, every man is good their approach was wrong and so their life became a script playing out some of you are looking at me now brothers as sincere as you are you are about to replay the same script if you don't change you will be shocked to see how you will find out that what you desire let me tell you there is no bad man who married his wife to destroy her are you hearing me nobody I'm a man, I've been a man all my life I'm not just being a man now So you have to listen to me I know exactly Men are not bad people But there are concepts That have turned men into beasts Are we together? A God fearing person The word of God I always give this analogy when I'm counseling people Listen If wife come if watch this this is my wife and i want the television to be here everybody look up this is a television now i want the tv to be here and my wife says my husband this tv has to be there there is a conflict of ideas now to be god fearing means both of us must have the unashamedness or at least i to say what does the word of god say about tv is the word of god says there should be no tv what happens to my will? I fold my will 
to let the will of God prevail. There is no family that will suffer when the man can accept the will of God. The problem is usually the will of the man. And I look at her and say, what part of your dowry didn't I pay? You talk to me, I will slap you. Forget that I'm a man of God. I'm a man, it's just that I'm of God. You talk to me, I will slap you. Are we together? Hmm. And you know men, we are very arrogant people. We can be entering hellfire and claim that it's AC. We are, and drag people in trouble until we get in there. And then we say, well, I, I did not exactly understand. The configuration of a man is such that we have a lot to protect. That's why submitting to the ways of God is very hard. That's why in most crusades, women are more. The men don't come. They would rather watch from the television and kneel down and receive the same miracle. But to come and be healed, they feel is an insult. I am a director of A and B and C. But tonight I pray that God will raise men who can submit. I love the song the worship team sang. Look, there is nothing as excellent as a man, especially a young man who has submitted to the will of God in every matter. It doesn't matter how it stings my ego. Once the word of God contradicts my concept, I bend. I don't look for an explanation. No, sir. It is being God-fearing that will make you never to carry your hand and beat your wife. You are angry, but what did the Bible say about wives? It said, treat them as unto weaker vessels. So when you slap your wife and you are boiling, you are not just a stupid man, you are not submitting to the ways of God. When you love your wife just because she made a nice hair, and say, hey, hey, now you are talking, you are, you are carnal, number one. That is not even true love. Because the Bible says husbands love their wives as Christ loved the church. So the thing is to study how Christ loved the church. He said, while we were yet sinners, undeserving, unqualified, in due season, Christ loved us so when a man has to punish his wife to end his love by dressing well i'm not against good dressing i'm not against looking well i'm not against all of these things but if you force your your wife to have to succumb to those things the day she sees another woman who has those things much more than her she becomes insecure because she knows how unpredictable your love is the fear of the lord Many men do not fear God. Principles of parenting. Do you know that there are families and there are cultures for instance that teach that a man can beat his wife at least once or twice so that when he beats her she will know that this is not a stupid, it's not a sissy. I mean it's, it's a show of masculinity. I senior you in age, in strength, in whatever it is in salary and you joke with me i beat you once then i ask you for forgiveness i'm forgiving you you are forgiving me but the memory of what happened will keep you in place that has worked for a lot of people but i hate it not i don't care whether it works or not it's not consistent with the word of god the word of god is not about what works or not it's about what god says if i apply the word of god and it does not work i will still remain there not because of the result it produces but because that's what came out of the mouth of god that's what it means to be an ardent follower of the word sisters are you listening unfortunately now we we live in a generation where and please don't don't find this insulting many of our sisters some of you are here looking at me now you are so gullible just anybody just comes wherever he has small money small whatever you are praying in tongues yet you are not allowing what you are praying to inform the decisions i am shocked when some ladies bring some brothers to me and say, I like him. I want to say, where did you keep your brain? I taught you so many things. Look at the kind of person you are dragging. Completely antichrist in his approach. Why do you love him? He loves me. Is he a Christian? I, uh, he's a nice, he comes around. Listen, let me tell you something another wife uh, well just for this example you are not permitted to marry another wife listen watch this everyone do you know the only thing you cannot change in your life is God and your wife and children 
you are supposed to change your cloth after some time you are permitted as lovely as this cloth I'm wearing is after a few months it will fade and I'll throw it away and sew another one so it's amazing how you can love something now and hate it but the Bible says you are staying with that woman so there's no you can't change her like a cloth meaning you must find out from God what he must put in you and her to make her remain fresh if you change clothes change phone change car and yet the Bible says you cannot change your wife you must find out Lord and the woman is growing old so it means you must do something to me that is beyond the physical to keep me faithful I told you tonight my heart is, is indicting a good matter we are just warming the plane. We must reach that altitude this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. God fearing. Sisters, I want you to burn this revelation. The first thing to look at in a man is not the car he brought. Hello? Say hi. Hello? Because some of you, if we don't press you like this, you know, I've discovered in church that many people don't listen. As you are talking like this, they are looking at you. They are even writing. But their hearts are already made up. No, sir. I'm saving you trouble. You will thank me for it. Not everything that glitters is gold. And don't let anyone pressure you, whether parents or friend, and say, after all, what is there? He can take care of us. What is your idea of care? Buy you things? Are we together? A God-fearing man. A man, he doesn't have to be a pastor. Uh-uh. God-fearing has nothing to do with a pastor. God-fearing has nothing to do with praying eight hours. A man can pray eight hours and not be God-fearing. I told you there is a difference between believing God and having a reverence for God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Hmm. The fear of God. Submitting to the authority of the word submitting to the authority of the word so you may be Igbo you may be Hausa you may be Yoruba you may be Kaduna state whatever another land you may be from another nation of the world it does not matter the issue of this is how we do it in our place this is how it is in our place our fathers used to our this used to happen no 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 people do those kinds of nonsense things do you know how this refusal to conform to the word of God has brought trouble between people it's the reason why many marriages are not working parenting so the man has his idea on how to raise children he got it from his friends he got it from bad people are we together now do you know the average young child was not really trained by his parents he just lived with them it's one thing to live with me but it's another thing to be mentored and trained by me that you are going around in my house does not mean I'm training you the Bible said, train up a child. It didn't say live with him. Many people are living with their children, but they are not training their children. So their children get the training from their friends. Bad books, bad magazines, rubbish films, nonsense photos and pictures. And by the time that child is 10 or 11 years, somebody else is training him. How does a train move? They are connected. The train will not move against where the head of the train is moving so train a child means set the pace don't tell them to do it lead them in doing it you don't ask a child to buy you cigarettes and then as he drops he say if i catch you with cigarettes i will kill you by myself i've told you smoking is very bad forget that i'm doing it you are not training the child is god speaking to us what i'm saying is a very serious thing God fearing. Number two, ladies, the second thing that you must, in this order, in this order, it has to be in this order. The second thing is that that man must submit to an earthly authority. I'm giving you redefined 21st century world compliant. He must be able to submit to an earthly authority for mentorship, 
for building for correction there are many families in trouble today because there is no authority figure over the life of the husband there's no man that can call him and say no no what you are doing is wrong he can beat the wife and almost kill her he's the god of himself never marry a man who does not have a pastor a mentor a spiritual authority an elderly person there must be a personality that he has covenanted to listen to the person say amen, amen. very powerful revelation i give you there are many ladies who say ah you're in a relationship i think you should see a pastor. say i see a pastor for what 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 should i see him for that's how after he slaps you and you say let's go and see a pastor. you say for what listen no matter how wrong a man and a woman is if there is someone for them to listen you are still safe you are still safe i've had the privilege of talking with a lot of couples i remember one couple they fought in kaduna it was a brutal fight police had to come police for husband and wife and to, and, and they are christians the woman just took she could not take it that day and she decided that look i will try my best whatever i would i would have to attempt this man today true story and two of them after the door settled the police people told them look you are married people don't make a fool out of yourself go on you can you know know how to fix things up two of them agreed that they were going to report themselves to me so they reported themselves and then they came for counseling do you know at the end of that counseling simply because they were people who understood submission at the end of it, the man was hugging his wife as if he never slapped her. Nice people. And as far as I know, things are working. It was a very minor issue and all of that. Sisters, please hear me in the name of Jesus. The 21st century has changed things. Some of us, this is the dilemma that our fathers came in they had been beating our mothers for many years there are some of us if there was an authority figure the divorce would not have happened there was no one the man decides he's the god of the family the day he decides to descend upon the family with wrath everybody's in trouble sisters the man must be able to show you clearly what authority figure is in his life do you know why let me tell you this emeka come sweetheart come assuming stand here assuming this lady emeka comes to ask this lady out and says he wants to marry her do you know if she tells him and says okay whatever it is this is an authority figure in my life and i would like you to see him do you know why the man will run away because he doesn't plan to be faithful and he doesn't want anything that will tie him too much he wants an opportunity to still be doing runs at the side hello are we together so he's hoping that by alienating himself there are many brothers who claim to love you people they come and drop you for koinonia and go away and after the grace they now come and pick you that's dangerous naomi told ruth he said um, um ruth told naomi he says my god will be your god your people will be my people are we together because if i know this guy with this lady tomorrow if i see her smiling at somebody i have the right to ask a question and say ah i hope that guy is your brother <laughs> that smile is too generous for just an ordinary this thing so what is the issue and if there is an issue i will at least try to find out it's all right if the issues are irreconcilable but at least that there is some level there is disorder in the body of christ because everybody is doing anything that's why you can find one brother with 20 girlfriends scattered all around and they never know themselves yet the brother can be leading worship yet the brother can be a pastor in charge of a and b and c you will tell this one i'll marry just be waiting you will just let me just put things in place while he's doing that he's already printing um, traditional wedding card how many ladies have been heartbroken a brother that has told them he has even met their parents while they are happy the next thing they just see a wedding card this is to notify you that the family of a and b is marrying c and d in in different places very careless and we make the church look stupid let me tell you there's order in the body of christ many people will hear what i'm saying and think no this orderliness will always empower satan 
disorderliness of any sort will always empower Satan. The Bible says, let all things be done decently and in order. Bless you. Bless you. Number three, very quickly. Are you getting blessed? So sisters, the first thing you should look at in a man, and if you are married and your husband doesn't have this, begin to labor in the place of prayer. Labor generously in the place of prayer. Lord, turn the heart of this man. He must be God-fearing. I've married, the deed has been done. But Lord, you can still step in. You are the God of the second chance. Step in. I will never allow my daughter to marry anybody that is not God-fearing. Bring a jeep, bring a plane, carry hamper for me. That, that, all that one is your cup of tea. If you are not God-fearing, the first question I'll ask you is not what you studied or where you have a job. Are you right with God? And you know that you'll not just tell me yes. I'll say, that's all right. Let's go to the next question. No, 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 no. We stay there and press it. Right with God means what? Yeah. Right with God means what? You don't just say, I'm right with God. Are you, are you a member of what? I'm a member of living faith. Okay, that's all right. No, no. I can, in five minutes through your words, I can know you are just a church goer. You don't fear God. Yeah. Let's restore the fear of God so that our children will be raised. You send children to school. You have finished training your children in the fear of God. They now go and meet a very indisciplined child who came from a family that does not fear God and start making your child who fears God feel like an inferior person. Is that not what happened to some of us growing? You left good Christian families. The day they were talking about pornographic movies, you've never known anything like that. And you say, I don't know anything. They say, are you joking? You have 14 years. You've never watched this. And they make you feel guilty for loving God. And it's that guilt that drives you to say, no, I have to educate my mind. And look at what has happened to your life now. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, through the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. Be determined to correct the mistakes of your parents with your life. You have insulted your father. You have insulted your mother. It's now your chance. Oh, Apostle, I want to marry this year. Congratulations. But you listen carefully. Do you know some people, if not for this teaching, you are about to make a blunder this Valentine. Because they always come around this time. Wolves in sheep's clothing. They stroll around and they come and look for good church ladies. Well-cultured Christian girls who they can play with their mind because of the innocence of the world. There are many ladies, if it's not a church girl, her eye has opened. When the guy does nonsense, she will jack him and say, we'll die here. I'm not a stupid person. I will show you that although I'm a lady. But a nice, well-cultured church girl has been trained to respect men. Has been trained to behave well. Many bad boys like church girls because they avoid trouble. They, they, the pastor has done the work. So I can easily manipulate them into nonsense. And the guy will use the scripture and say, don't shout at me. Remember what apostle said? He said, it's true. Apostle said we should be nice. They always look for these periods and come and destroy the life of ladies. It pains me when I see very nice ladies and their entire life has been crushed and crumbled by very bad boys because they are sincere. They are innocent. And you know why? We pastors don't teach it because we think it's not necessary. So we allow people to make all their mistakes and destroy their lives and destinies. I get text messages literally every day. One trouble after another in a family. Please ladies, listen to me very carefully. God-fearing, submission to an earthly authority. I have seen how beautiful many homes have become. Not necessarily because the men are so godly, but the power of submission. The Lord has revealed things to me about certain families and I've called the husbands to say, Husband, would you want to adjust A and B and C? I think you are doing this to your wife. I think you are doing this to your children. Oh, apostle, I didn't know it was this way. All right. Direction. Number three. Sister, you are praying or considering a man to marry or you are married. That man must have passion for you, not love. Passion. 
Passion is an adjective that qualifies the extent of love. I love you is not a language that is useful again in this generation because it has been abused. Are you, are you get what I'm saying? One tout can be somewhere holding his ego and as you are passing, he says, is that I love you? So, people don't even know what I love you means again. I love you means something carnal and fleshly. Passion. Please look at me. Let me tell you. Any man who does not have passion for you will be unfaithful. Write it down. Write it down and put my name under. Don't, don't post anything and put my name, but write it down for your consumption. Any man with no passion for his wife, I give you an ironclad guarantee he will be unfaithful. It's not if, it's when. Do you know, let me tell you a shocking truth. Do you know that over 75 to 80 percent of men, even in Christian families, married men, within the first five years of their marriage have been unfaithful to their wives? Statistically confirmed. I told you it's not because they are bad. Passion. It is passion. Passion is more than physical stature and, and, what, and all of these things. Are we together now? Yeah. So, that's why I hate arranging marriage. I'm saying it again. You know it. I've told you. Arra marriage that from nowhere you are just standing and they come and say, here's the lady. It's okay. You can suggest, you can recommend and people can pray. But where you just ag agree and the day the person is appearing is the day a ring is entering your hand. Hey, hey, hey. You are in big, 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 big trouble because the man is only marrying a wife, not a friend. It is a friend that stick it closer than a brother. Any marriage where there is no passion, there must be unfaithfulness. It's not there will be. There must be unfaithfulness. A man cannot struggle indefinitely contemplating his love for his wife. He will find an alternative. And what a generation with many alternatives. His secretary is there. If she's not there, the other one is there. If she's not around, another devil is there somewhere in the hotel. If she's not there, a, a receptionist of another place is somewhere. At every given point, there is somebody waiting to destroy your husband. There are certain women, there are spirits that walk in them, only married men. If they see a young man, no matter what you have, it's not their business. But once they see you, you are married. Ah, what a joy. If you complain about your wife, say, ah, what kind of a woman will oppress such a nice man as this? That's right. He's starting. He's starting. That's exactly what the man wants to hear. I'm very serious with what I'm sharing tonight. Passion. When two people come, you know, to introduce themselves, they just come. You see, sometimes they hold hands. It's as if, hey, hey, hey let's marry you. I said, oh God, just calm down. Because these motions are not passion. Passion is not the, the physical exertion. You are all around the lady. That's not passion. Sometimes it's just jealousy and your personality. It's not passion. Passion is the depth of resolve. It's a resolve within you. That through that lady you have gotten satisfaction and fulfillment. No need for another. The Bible puts it excellently. Many daughters have done well. But thou excellest them. A man who cannot say that to his wife is already a dangerous man. It is true. I know that you may not be the most beautiful lady. Let's tell the truth. I've seen this lady. I know she's beautiful, but you are my wife. You occupy a place that you alone can stay. May God raise men who can speak like that. Not that a beautiful lady passes and even the wife is now afraid because she knows who she married. She just says, honey, must we stand outside? Let's go inside. She, she has already known. The man said, no, no, no. I have to take fresh air. What is all this? Vulnerability. See, let me tell you something. Let me tell you a big secret. There are four sets of people if you are marrying, you have to listen to this thing two times. One, if you are marrying a man of God, we are exposed to people every day. People means options. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Number two, a high profile businessman. Number three, a politician. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Number four, a lecturer. Anybody in the academia. If you are married to any of these four people, listen with both ears and add your spirit in it. Because he is exposed. 
as I'm standing here preaching, there are all kinds of pretty ladies. You are not seeing me, but I'm seeing you. Are we together? Say amen. Amen. So, when you are not careful, you will be surprised that your husband has four children. You never knew. One day, somebody just knocks your house and says, I must look for my father. Say, what is going on here? Spiritual father. And you see a carbon copy of your child. Look, look, look. Don't think I'm just talking. There are many children scattered around. They belong to your family. It's just that you don't know. The day Jesus will come. Let's just leave him to be the judge. Amen. Please let me have our attention. Very serious issues. Have you not seen families? Some of you come from those families. After 20 years, one day they'll call a meeting. And say, honestly, well, there, are, there are so many there are complications around. You don't know who is your real mother. You don't know who is your real father. You really don't know how many you are in your family. You just know what they told you. As you grow, you keep learning more. You thought you were seven. Now you have discovered you are ten. And eventually, the children will say they are coming. When the father now dies, that's when you will know there's trouble. Because the family with the legitimate wife are all girls. And the ones they gave birth to somewhere are boys. The moment the father dies, they now show up and say, no way, our father is our father. And in our culture, women don't inherit anything. Therefore, they displace people. I've counseled cases like that. Are we together? Very important. Passion. Please, my brother, if you find out it is okay, listen, it is very okay to see a lady and just be fond of her. The mystery of attraction is when you find a lady or a person or an object demonstrating many things you perceive to represent value to you. So if beauty represents value, it's impossible to see a pretty girl and pretend it's not being spiritual. Look, look very well. They ask you why. I say because I'm a Christian. You are not lying. So looking, it's not all those fake things to pretend you. A pretty lady passes there. Yeah, I didn't see any. No, you saw. You saw. It's just that you have self-control. Are we together? Passion. You must have passion. You must have passion. Many people don't have passion. The lifespan of their passion is a few weeks after marriage. The lifespan of their passion is when they say, I do. Some, the lifespan of their passion is when she gives them three children and four children. That was his goal, to have children. They've been pressuring you, promise, you are getting old. No marriage. Marry. I need three children. Fine. That's the premise of the marriage. So you married an object that produces children. The moment she produces the children, the goal has been achieved. So there is nothing else. Do you know how many women, brothers and sisters, some of you parents, some of you sadly, you are the ones yourself in that kind of shoes. Do you know how many women move like strangers before their husband? And sometimes they almost wonder and say, you mean this man once asked me out. He once stood in the cold waiting for me to come. Look at how some of our fathers treat our mothers. It's a mess. And they have mentored us to do the same. If God does not intercept, believe me, you will reproduce the same result. Many daughters have done well, but thou excellest them all. There is an appetite for discontentment in the body of Christ. Brothers, let me encourage you. Please be careful. And, and, and sisters too, have not come to brothers yet. I'm talking about sisters. But it's a quality for brothers. Passion whenever you see that you are attracted to a lady it's not enough reason to go and ask them out that's lack of self-control are we together it is okay that i look at this lady and i'm attracted to her it's okay but self-control that's what they say in the multitude of many counsel there is safety some the moment you see a lady and she's fine day and then even if it's during a prayer session in the heat of prayer say please can you see me after after prayer (laughs) 
discipline. Hallelujah. The next moment, that's your first time. You are even new in the prayer. They have not even confirmed you. You are not a member of the prayer department. You are just arriving that day. You say, sister, honestly, where, where do your parents stay? Let me tell you what you have just revealed about yourself. You are a very indisciplined brother. Because you come into a place with structure and authority. And you just come in and do anything you want to do. And sometimes the ladies are foolish enough to play around those kind of things. Discipline. Let people come and meet order in your life. Then they are forced to respect that order. Are we together now? Jesus is helping us today. Somebody, somebody is really getting blessed from what I'm saying. It's very important. Are we together now? Passion. If you are married here, you must pray consistently, brothers, fathers, to keep having passion for your wife, not just your children. Because gone are the days when ladies will respect a man just when he's married. And you can see and say, ah, Jimmy is married, let's leave him. No. No, you can see somebody as old as my father and still come and meet me. Like, daddy, how are you? That daddy is, is, is just means I'm available. Gone are the days. You can see a man at my father's age, see a small girl, and say, Ah, my daughter, how are you? You, you would think he's fatherly, my daughter, but he's, he's, he's not fatherly, my daughter at all. It's another dimension on his own. So that you are married, you know, sometimes. Many men deceive themselves. They just think the moment you are married, it just means people will leave you alone just because you are married. No. Our society, it should be like that. But our society has become so depraved that a ring is just a jewelry. A ring is just a jewelry for entertainment. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Something that symbolizes a covenant relationship is is entertainment. So when you wear a ring and say, if they see a ring, they'll mind themselves. It's a joke. It's a big joke. Where to? It won't change anything. Thank you, my dear. Love and passion. Love and passion. And then the last key. Ladies, I will dwell a bit here today. Never marry a man who is irresponsible. That's the last point. There must be a demonstration of responsibility. 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 Many brothers are irresponsible. Christian brothers inclusive. Irresponsible. Tongue-talking Christian brothers. What does it mean to be responsible? To be responsible means it means to be aware of the cost dimension of life taking cognizance of the cost dimension of life i don't mean money that anything to be done must be done by someone the bible says every house is built by some man but god is the builder of all an irresponsible person says uh uh-uh, they have not done it a responsible person says can we do it are you seeing that now Let me tell you something. Please look up. There is a tragedy that has happened in Nigeria, especially to Nigerian young men. Please listen. If you can hear what I'm saying, it will save you. Many gentlemen around the world have been victims of this. And some of them seated here looking at me. I want you to listen very carefully. Do you know many young men have been over pampered and that's why they are irresponsible today? Overpampering does not mean they came from a rich family. A poor family can still overpamper a man. Let me tell you how they overpampered them. A young man is 18 years. The moment he's washing his clothes, you say, ah, is there not house help? Wash for him. Because we have washing machine in our house. A young man who is supposed to start learning to be responsible. Are we together now? He goes out and by 4 o'clock you are ringing his phone. Return home. Return home. It looks like you are trying to be disciplinary. There is an age range where he needs to be home. But there is an age range where that guy is submissive. Maybe he's in church as a choir director. And you are now calling a mature boy of 19 years old. It's 5 o'clock. Where are you? Come home. So the guy is now 25 and he stays home. He married with his wife and stays home. Just like mommy said. Obedient child. 
nobody goes out to get food again because he has been trained come home in America from 12 years 12 years old in America you see children looking for something to do post office ah there there's no chair for us they always expect to be recipients not contributors it's not your fault that's why I'm helping you tonight many brothers are like that they are born again they love God but anything that discomforts them a little uh -uh, they don't want it it's irresponsibility that produces laziness laziness get up and do something you have a meeting for 5 o'clock it's raining heavily I say Kai oh quarter to 5 please uh, Benga, I can't make it for the meeting. Kai, I'm tired. This rain, the cold is too much. That's a lazy man who will not feed his family. You see that? He will not feed his family because he will say there's crisis in Nigeria. They can kill people if they go outside and he will leave his family members to die. The Bible says a lazy man will not sow because of the cold and he will also not reap. I am a fanatic of responsibility. Responsibility. You cannot be around me and not be a responsible person. Waiting for things to be done for you. No, sir. You must learn to be an initiator, not just a recipient. There are many men today, the salary comes from their wives. Correct? It's okay if there is a situation that happened in, in the course of the marriage and the woman has to be supporting. You see somebody from 1996, no job. It's the wife that works pays the children's school fees and the man is alive two hands two legs he gets up in the morning sits at the veranda of the house they are playing draft together with other colleagues irresponsible men who come they form a team and they just play where's your wife uh, you know she's a nurse she works in the hospital you know women she will come in the evening the woman will return there is no food she will come and be cooking and the, the male figure in that family is learning he doesn't like it but his ideology is being shaped after the example he's seen there are too many irresponsible people. There are irresponsible pastors who expect members to be the one to raise money for church. Have you seen people like that? There are irresponsible pastors who expect members to be the ones to give them money. Am I not your pastor? Buy a car for me. Build a house for me. Marry for me. That's an irresponsible man of God. He's a man of God but an irresponsible one. Responsibility. So you must look at it. Responsibility is not having a car. That's not responsibility. Responsibility is not having a house. That's not responsibility. That's the indices many ladies are using and you are already getting into a big mistake. Responsibility is not having a car and a house. Please listen. I can have a car and a house by the privilege of access. It doesn't mean I'm responsible. So stop using a car and a house to prove that a man is responsible. Eventually it's an index that will show responsibility. But responsibility is from the heart. The willingness to grow, to press. The willingness to fulfill the cost dimension of life. Don't say there are two brothers. One has a car. The other one is working on his foot. And so I, let me just go with what I'm seeing now. The moment the car spoils, that's the last car he will ever buy in his life because he never bought the first one in the first place. Many ladies don't know how to trust God for good brothers. We pray in tongues, but we don't know what to expect. And so I'm painting a picture for you right now. Somebody already after Koinonia, you answer the guy. You see how God has given you the answer? The answer is no. The answer is no. Immediately after Koinonia, you send him a text. Say, please. Sorry I've delayed you, but the answer is no. Because you are not God-fearing. You don't submit to any authority and you don't want to. He may not know, but is he willing to now that he knows? Are we together now? Yeah. Number three, do you love me passionately? No. You passworded your phone, passworded your text, passworded your laptop, passworded a call is coming, you just run outside. You save the name of a lady, John. You save the name of the other lady, Andrew. Because you turn the head of people to be stupid. Andrew, why are you calling me? It's a coded language. You are not serious. Hallelujah. And finally, the man is not responsible. The average African family has a, has a family to take care of. A nuclear family first. I hope you are aware. Brothers, are you aware? <laughs> Be aware now that 
the average African family, there is every likelihood your wife is not the last born. What does that mean to you? You are a direct contributor. You are going to contribute. There are families that they gave birth late. Praise God. So, one sister is ready for marriage. The other one is still in primary school. You are going to take care of them. It's not supposed to be so, but it's a reality you are bargained for. That's what saying I love you means. That's what saying I want to marry you means. She tells you I'm the firstborn. Out of how many? Seven. You said you still love her. What you are trying to say is, look, it's all right. We can find a way around it. Brothers, let me say your own quickly. Brothers, I can beg you in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. It's better to have a broken relationship, honorable. In fact, don't break relationships, end them. It's better to have an ended relationship than to have a scattered and pieces marriage. One, you can give me, thank you. What do you look for in a, a lady? God fearing, too. You see that God fearing is the same for both male and female. God fearing, exact same definitions as with the man, nothing changing, gender irrespective. The same God fearing, God fearing, meaning you respect God. Many ladies don't respect God, many ladies don't respect God, they respect themselves, they respect society. They respect every other thing but God. There are ladies who pride themselves in being bad girls, even if they are in church. They are happy when they look and say, you're a bad girl. They, they smile. That we go do. If you're a bad girl, it's a very bad, it's not a good comment. You know, many ladies feel guilty. Listen, I'm saying this from the depth of my heart. Many sisters, innocent church sisters, they feel guilty. Listen, they feel guilty for being innocent. You know, society makes it look like your eye has not opened. You've not been sleeping around. You've never drank in your life. Uh -uh. You don't have a boyfriend. You are 20 years. Uh -uh. You mean this is this? This is how your life is? And they make ladies feel guilty for being innocent. They look and say, she's a small girl. She's just growing old. Come to us. We, we, we have our legs. Are, you, see, you are happy for being bad. It's a different thing if it's your past. Jesus has helped you now. Or at least will help you this night. Are we together? God-fearing. A woman who is not God-fearing will have a husband and her sponsor. That's how she will marry. There is a husband and a sponsor. What is the sponsor for? Rainy days. What's the husband for? Every other thing. So once the going gets tough, she calls. Do you know how many women, married women, still call those who were their ex-husband or ex-boyfriend or ex-sugar uh, son or ex-whatever it is and call the person after many years? A woman with five children still calls one small boy somewhere. How are you reporting her husband to the small boy? And the small boy says, How will we do now? I say, Can we meet in so 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 club at the back of that tree? Just the, the way we used to meet before. You are married. The, the average lady still has affiliations with her past relationships, even in her marital home. I will say it all. Oh, my name is Joshua Selman. The average lady still has affiliations. I tell you this. You know I'm not lying. Some of you as you are looking at me, you know it's true. Although you may be married, but you still call John. And it's not just brotherly, how are you? Is the family okay? No, John. I need help. You have to help me. It's my husband. You know he's a stupid man, John. I say, as it is always, you, you know, we know ourselves. I say, no problem, John. Can you do the transfer now? Praise God. That's why they are not faithful. That's why they are not desperate to change their husbands. When they come for prayer meetings like this and they say, if your husband is not doing well, pray. They are not praying. They know the prayer will be answered and they are not interested. So they rather just other people pray. And you see the woman just praying, just looking around. Because whatever happens, there is a, well, you don't say concubine for a man, do you? Somebody somewhere, an affiliate. <laughs> 
who they are waiting for. Number two, brothers, what should you look at in a woman? A woman who is submissive to the man at all times. Submissive to the man on the line at all times. I don't have a problem with submission, but when? At all times, convenient or not. Submission has never been a choice. Write it down. That's your own part. Oh, apostle, you don't know how foolish my husband is. Don't worry, I'm coming. I've not finished. For now, just know your own role. Submit. Submission is a difficult thing. Listen, ladies, look at me. Let me tell you a big secret. Submission is a risk. It's a risk. You don't know the man too well. No matter how long you have been going out, submission is a risk. When you marry, you will discover many other things you never knew. Submission is by faith and it's a risk. It's a risk. You've not seen what the man can do when he has money. You've not seen what the man can do when he doesn't have money. You've not seen what the man can do when his job is under pressure. You've not seen what he's done if he's promoted to become a CEO. Yet the Bible says submit. Submission is a risk. You need the Holy Spirit to do it. That's why you have your own part to make sure that the authority you submit to has been vetted thoroughly by God. Hallelujah. You must submit to the man at all times. When ladies refuse to submit to their husbands and they say he's not man enough, that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible did not say submit to man enough men. Apostle, he's not, he's not providing anything. I'm the one bringing the money. I'm the one paying the school fees. I'm not stupid. I know. Be word compliant. You are, can only judge disobedience when your obedience is complete. There are many ladies who want the men. Listen, and sisters, please hear me. Most of us, this mindset came from our mothers and our, our parents generally. We must correct it. The idea that a man must prove he is capable, then I will now submit to him. Hey, you are a hypocrite. You are doing this exactly what his secretary is doing in the office. Who will not submit to a man who gives you food? If I buy you a plate of food, won't you greet me like this the next time? That's what you want your husband to do. There is a difference between your husband and other people. I know you don't like what I'm saying, but it's the Bible. Remember, we agreed that we are going to submit to God in all things. That's the Bible. Submission is hard. I never said it is easy. I never said it is easy. You will be a fool submitting. It's sad, but it's the truth. Because there are times it will not make sense. Your friends will look at you and say, you are stupid. Why are you doing this? Your husband does not deserve you. It's true. But the Bible says that's why for those of you who are not married and those of you who are not in a relationship, you should thank God. All this rush, I want to enter a relationship, my blood is hot. You will thank God now for this message. Because the relationship you would have entered would be the beginning of disaster. No guidance. Submit to the man at all times. And it starts from the relationship. It's not when you get married. No, it starts from the relationship. I know submission is not foolishness, but the Bible instructs it. You see why mentorship is good? You see why I spoke about a spiritual authority? Because if you are playing your role well, and the man is not doing his thing, you have a right. That third party that has been authorized can come in and say, no, 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 no. Wife is doing her part well. And because the man submits to authority, he will listen. If it's deliverance, they will cast the demon out. If it's counseling, they will manage his pressures at the moment. But where you are submitting to a man who does not submit to God, does not submit to authority, you are in trouble. Big trouble. What is number three? Let's hurry up. What kind of woman should you marry, brother? A woman who is sacrificial and hospitable. Third point. Sacrificial and hospitable. In the 21st century, you marry a woman who cannot sacrifice, you have married disaster. There are many ladies who like, who cannot inconvenience themselves for the growth of their homes. No. Hallelujah. The moment the man loses his job, the wife changes. She can't love him again. 
There are many people like counsel and it's, it's sad the way their wives treat them when things are not going well. Oh, he just bought a house. He just got promotion. My husband, my husband. They just blackmailed him. Oh. They said, ah, this and that happened and they demoted him. She won't refuse, but you see the body language. Honey, why now? You know I don't like plantain. Please don't disturb me. In this house, when you bring money, we cook well. Subliminal statements. You have started communicating. It's a terrible thing. Please hear what I'm saying. The Lord is speaking very seriously. Never submit to a man because he has money or because he does not have money. The Bible never does that. The Bible never instructs that. So choose whether you want to marry or not. Thank God marriage is not compulsory. But if you want to do it God's way, you must submit. There is no excuse for rebellion. It's a terrible thing when women gather together with their friends. Now I know, I know, look, I understand that there are times that women sit down and talk to comfort themselves. But there are women who are perpetually in a habit, in a habit of sitting with groups. They travel to this state, there is a group. And they sit down and lambast their husbands. They talk all kinds of nonsense, reveal family secrets, bedroom secrets are, that are not for the consumption of the public. And when they finish, they come back and they expect all those women everywhere to respect the men. They will not. Your man, your man had a challenge and maybe he had an affair with a lady. He has apologized. A man of God came in. They managed the situation. It's only you and the pastor who has managed the situation. You now carried your mouth. You have run it from east to west, from UK to London. Everybody knows your husband once had a challenge. And one day they look at him and the day he annoys the person who knows that secret, the person will go and publish something. In 1971, you see them do it in America. When God is about to bless somebody, somebody will just come crying on TV and say, look, I remember what you did to me. These are that. Because we don't keep quiet. The Bible says that even a fool when he's silent is regarded wise. The Bible tells every woman to cover her head there is a dimension of physical covering but there is a dimension of spiritual covering cover your head the head over your life protect him protect him he's vulnerable protect him are you getting blessed sacrificial listen no matter how rich you are no matter how blessed you are a time must come in your relationship and your marriage when you will need sacrifice. Is that true? Sacrifice. There may be times when God can give an instruction. Promise. So that three bedroom flat that you have built and go to a rented apartment. I don't teach irresponsibility but there are times God will give that instruction and for those times it will require sacrifice there are times because you want a good education of your child you will constrain certain things please we cannot go to london on vacation one day we will go but for now we cannot go let us use that money to train our children but there are many women they won't hear other women are going even those who are your genius in office but we we are here no unhealthy comparison hospitality I don't want to talk about that sadly there are ladies who are not hospitable at all you will buy bonds together with a friend you are just with the friend you eat the bonds eat the second one eat the third one squeeze the leather and try and say this bond serve is not very sweet you will never give it even to say please take you give them once if they say no you refuse because you never meant to give it stingy attitudes and that kind of thing translates in the home visitors who come to your house and sit down for hours they are discussing critical issues with your husband there are even women men of god who come to their house and they won't do anything when the man is about going ah, ah, when we are warming rice please i stayed in your house for two hours warming with rice even if you are cooking it it will be done by then <laughs> ladies listen 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 please don't laugh it's a serious thing it starts from your attitude in the hostel your pot is your own. Your corner is your own. Your everything is your own. Your shoe is your own. Your water is your own. Your Bible is your own. Your bedsheet is your own. That's how everything will be your own. Even when you get married, you will demarcate it. Husband, this section of the house is for me. 
this one is for you this one is for the children there are many people who cannot give they like taking but they cannot give me ever buy anything for a guy over my dead body he will keep buying for me oh. because to buy 200 naira the charge card he said what will I do he's already rich that's he's the one that asked me out I didn't ask him all that, those stupid Nigerian film type wise sayings that many people imbibe and keep using to destroy their lives no sir sacrifice say sacrifice you must learn to sacrifice many ladies feel ashamed being sacrificial they feel cheap being sacrificial we have been indoctrinated by a society that makes women feel cheap when they have to sacrifice so they come to a guy and honestly speaking all this guy has is a small room and all of this but god is helping him and no 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 that attitude of sacrifice is not there i want tomorrow now now i want tomorrow now They say we should do this, this and that. I need 90,000 from you. And the brother says, look, honestly, I don't have anything now. You know it. I mean, you can take my ATM. You won't hate him, but your body language. There are many relationships I've counseled. The moment the guy does not have money, he's in trouble. You will see the language of the lady. One month before he gave her 10,000, as if it's your father. You called your physical father. He said he won't give you anything. You now call somebody you are going out with and you want to swallow him. Only 2,000. Okay, I'm grateful. You are saying you are grateful, but your body language for that remaining one month Kai, is being shameless. It's not good training. Hallelujah. You come into the life of a man you did not contribute anything. Yet, just because he loves you, you want to sit down at the throne of his heart and control his ATM and control his destiny. The only person permitted to occupy that position is Jesus. Are we together? Yeah. There are many brothers suffering under the hands of ladies and women and wives in many respects who cannot be patient. You don't eat tomorrow today. Are you getting blessed? Brothers, the last thing is now the physical factor. Are you seeing that is now I even brought the physical factor? It must be in that order. That's when you can look at every other thing you want to look at. She beautiful, is she all of these things? L listen, as I have known God more, truly let me tell you this, as I have known God more, and as I have received mentorship from men and women and elderly people who have worked in this life, I found out that all these physical things they are important, but sincerely let me tell you the truth from the depth of my heart, they will fade like a leaf. They will fade and vanish like a leaf. I have counseled very beautiful women whose husbands pounded their faces like whatever and drove them out without praying about it. If the entire reason why you are attracted to a woman is physical, you are in trouble. You are in trouble. I was in Jos when I went to see my parents at, at the beginning of this year. I happened to go and visit um, one man, he used to be my principal, and that was the advice he gave me before he knelt down and, 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 and I'll pray for him. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you one truth. Be careful. I'm not saying physical things are not important, but when your concentration on physical beauty or attraction or looks or physique or shape or whatever it is supersedes the fear of God, are we together now? Supersedes, what's the second one? submission to the man supersedes whatever you've heard me say it again you just come and meet a lady there are serious issues maybe in a family of 10 and all of them are non-christians you know what i mean and she's the only christian she's saying sorry oh this is the family you are going to you did settle down to pray you say no problem you are too fine for me to let you go you are in trouble my mother is a witch it's okay i love you like that at me i'm telling you she's a traditional pra i know don't, don't worry there's koinonia and there's miracle service and people get a lot of casualties sorry man of uh, my brother i need to tell you something i was born with some kind of deficiency honestly i'm physically not able to take in i can't have a child that's a little what is children the most important thing is love for you you will now drive yourself and get married after two years you want to kill her 
as if she didn't tell you. you see it. Please spiritualize, spiritualize your process of getting a wife. Don't be carnal. Don't sit with brothers and say, Have you looked at this one? What do you what can you say? It depends on who you are talking to. If you are talking, if you are talking to a brother who is not born again, you are in trouble. He will give you the counsel of a hitofel. And after two years, you will be surprised to see that beauty can fade. Say amen. God fearing, submissive at all times, sacrificial hospitable let me talk about responsibility for a while and then maybe for a few minutes and then we'll pray write it down first timothy chapter 5 verse 8 please give us first timothy 5 verse 8 quickly brothers i want to talk to you now i want to talk to everybody but specifically to the men we need responsible men in our society first timothy chapter 5 verse 8 is that possible if that's not possible i would look for it Go ahead and read it. It's projected inside, outside. One to read. Uh huh. Hold on. This is a big revelation. Stop there. The Bible says, provide for his own. His own talks of relative and everybody connected. Then it says, but especially, meaning first and foremost, what's your first responsibility? The Bible never said, love your neighbor as yourself. There are people who sit down and their wives are suffering and they are donating cars and buses to churches. Whereas they cannot pay their children's school fees. It's an irresponsible life. The Bible says, especially to those of his own house. He said he had denied what? The faith. And is worse than an infidel. Write this down. What is responsibility? Responsibility is a burden of obligation over someone or something. Responsibility is a burden of obligation over someone or something. Number two, quickly. Responsibility is an awareness of consequences. An awareness of consequences. That if you do this, there is a consequence. If you do not do this, there is a consequence. Responsibility is an awareness of consequence. I identified a few reasons here where people are, why people are generally not responsible. Let me talk about them for a few minutes. Number one, the reason why many people are not responsible and why they may never succeed is their indecision over their success and establishment the reason why many brothers many sisters but brothers especially may never get established is indecision there is a difference between a wish and a decision i want to eat rice that's a wish i want to eat rice but i will get up and go to the restaurant and buy it or i will go to the market to cook it that's a decision backed up by the willingness to pay the price to actualize it there are many brothers wishing wishing through prayer wishing through reading books wishing through receiving prophecy wishing through dropping their prayer points in miracle service no wishing does not pro provide an answer indecision over being successful look at me God is speaking to people here. I preached, the first message I preached about responsibility in ministry was a message called, come out of your father's house. That message blessed people in no small way. There are many of us who keep lying to ourselves that we are young. I'm, I'm young, you know, I am 20, I am 30, even 40, you say you are young. Are we together? You must learn to take responsibility over your heart your life if anything will be done you will have to contribute in making it happen indecision you've never made a decision to rise up and be serious you've made a decision to marry you've made a decision to have children you've made a decision to fantasize but you've not made a decision to be diligent diligent and say no I'm tired of the way my life is Lord Jesus things have to change Look, let me tell you something. 
there are brothers listening to me right now and some following online this night should be your night of decision many years ago I got I made up my mind that I was going to be a very responsible person I, I was a vow that I took with God are we together exactly 14 years ago in fact 15 years ago exactly 15 years ago I made that decision that I was going to be serious and be responsible the first book I bought was discovering your purpose by Dr. Mike Mudok, Dr. Miles Munro. And I sat down when I read that book, I cried. I remember writing it. I still have the book till today. It was a vow that I wrote. I will be a responsible man of God. I will be a, a responsible father. I will be a responsible husband. I will be a responsible leader. Decisions. How do I know you have taken a decision to be successful when you stop making excuses excuses the language of irresponsible men I would have done it but it's not my fault you too you understand no sir stop making excuses Nigeria is in recession that's why no men who make men who are fond of making excuses are not responsible men and that includes women too of course number two Admit your mistakes. That's how I know you have decided to succeed. Admit your mistakes. Admit it. Oh, I was careless in this area. I admit. Number three, stop blaming other people for your problems. Many young Nigerians like this. We blame government. We blame all kinds of things. We blame demons. We blame our father. My father didn't train me well. At my age, look at it's now I'm entering 100 level. It's not the best. But now that you have entered, take responsibility. Take responsibility. There are too many people in anger blaming people. They didn't pay my school fees. The reason why I'm sleeping around for school fees is because I have a stupid father. Okay, I agree. I sympathize with you. But now that you are in Christ, Is God speaking to us tonight? His teaching is becoming hot. Koinonia is quiet. I pray that it's entering your spirit because that's the goal. Stop making excuses. Brother, stop making excuses. Stop making excuses. You are making the same excuse since you were 15. You are 31 now. Stop making excuses. Your father drove your mother when you were 9 years. Now you are 20. You are 20. 11 years ago. Get over it and move forward. Oh, apostle, I was raped when I was two years. I'm sorry. I feel very bad for you. But the God of heaven has helped. I, 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 I'm, I'm not, I, I know it's very bad and it's disheartening. But get over it and move forward. In fact, we don't even have too much of that in Africa. It's down the west you find irresponsible people. A 70-year-old man will come out and say the reason why he was, he was poor was because the father emotionally abused him. And they will send a counselor 70 years. He, he abused you. Well, how old were you? I was five. For 65 years, you allowed your life to move like a car without a driver. And now you are blaming your father going to stand in his graveyard. Dad, I know you're dead. But this and that and that. Trouble. Stories. All this drama and gimmicks. Oh no. Take responsibility. Stand and throw stones at a graveyard and go back 70 years? That's a wasted life. Indecision. Have you made a decision that you will succeed? Brothers, look at me. Have you made a decision that your children will not beg for school fees under your authority? Don't say amen. Have you made a decision? Have you made a decision that your wife will not be moving around and go and enter one bus and somebody will be pushing her pregnant nine months. Madam, shift! One small boy somewhere is pushing your wife. Have you made a decision to be responsible? Have you made a decision to train your children in the fear of the Lord? Have you made a decision to bring the banner of Jesus in your family? Have you made a decision 
that you are not going to sit one day and explain and tell your children stories and say that man on TV we were classmates have you made a decision many of us have not we have been wishing but we have never made a decision tonight make it in koinonia are we together make that decision make that decision when you make a decision to be successful you will stop immediately you stop being a small child the concept of small child is not by age the moment there is nothing that occupies your life to keep you focused that's why people are free 10 o'clock you see them moving around drinking sugar cane on the road eating carrots on the road just moving around and they say ah bros how now and say you are free are you are you free say yes where are you going man i got one movie there's one new computer game that's a man who has not made a decision to be successful because when you make that decision your purpose is supposed to occupy you for a lifetime you will be too busy you have to even receive grace from god to think about marriage many people are not purpose driven by nine o'clock you've slept you wake up by six because you are free you still sleep back wake up by 12 you wake up you are still free you still sleep back you spend from four to five making calls disturbing visionary people how are you it's been a while I say sorry i'm walking why are you treating me like this is it because i don't have money let's talk jerry and the person is saying i'm busy and you call it pride may you be too busy for your enemies to distract you may you be too busy for visionless people to come into your life and come gossiping talking nonsense there are many of us our idleness and our purposelessness has created the exact atmosphere for gossip and everything because you are not working you don't do anything people will leave their homes and come and crowd in your house your your house is the meeting place everybody talks about their marriage they talk about their children they talk about everything you are the recipient Are we together? Somebody wants to come and gossip. As he's coming close to your house, he sees that you are busy. There are so many things happening. Many brothers are too idle. They are too idle. Call them in the night, they are snoring. Call them in the morning, they are snoring. You're not going to make a great life that way. Look, I will tell you the truth because I love you. That's why many of our parents could not pay our school fees. Huh? Could not pay our school fees. There are fathers today. There are many people seated here. It's not your parents that are paying your school fees. And they are alive. And they are doing well. You come and meet them and say, Daddy, I need school fees. They say, are you stupid? What should I do? He said, I don't know what is happening in Nigeria. Automatically, what they are telling you is, are you not a lady? Go and do whatever you know to do to bring the fees. Do you know how I know many parents are irresponsible? Now, let me say this. And I say it with all honor to God for the privilege of being able to help people. Out of all the people I have paid their school fees and paid the school fees, less than 2%, less than 2% of their parents have cared to call to find out who is paying your school fees. There are people who have been paying their school fees for more than four years. There are people who have paid their school fees from secondary school till they graduated. And not once did their parents call to say, come on, who exactly is the man of God that is paying your school fees? Let's at least come and see him and say thank you. Are we together? Yeah. So I know what I'm saying. Very irresponsible people. There are people, some of you, as you are here now, although you are a student, you are still sending money home. Your father is alive. Your mother is alive. It's not that they are old. They cannot work. They will even call you. My daughter, nothing for us this month. And they never ask you how the money is coming. So you don't even... Do you know, I made a statement and um, it is scaring me. The things that women and even men do for money is becoming scary. As I counsel people, I'm being afraid. Honestly, I will tell you this. There are many people, I tell you, their parents are not responsible for their lives. A daughter in a family where they cannot even afford bottled water comes with a phone of 150,000. She's not earning, she's not working. You don't know who is in a relationship with her. No brother has come to show he's responsible. And the father says, uh-uh, you are enjoying, you know. Just leave her own for us. 
You see that kind of man? Somebody comes to drop your daughter by 11.30 in the night. 11.30, you are the one as the father opens the gate for him. Say, ah, my God, look at this guy. Welcome. She enters with a new dressing that already shows hellfire. And yet, you, you please see, this thing I'm saying, I'm not being hard on people. I'm challenging something. If you love Jesus Christ and you love your future, you will love what I'm saying. You may not love me, but love what I'm saying. There's too much carelessness. To the extent that there are many parents who don't even know whether their daughters in, are in the home or not. Three days they've not come home. They don't know. If they see them, fine. If they don't see them, fine. It's a different thing. If they are adults, they can live their lives. You can say, this is my daughter, but I did not teach her this. She's taking her decision about life. But you see some of these young ladies that move around? Very small girls. They look at you. Even as a man of God, they don't respect you. Because people older than you are the ones dealing with them. You greet them, they want to treat you like that man who was with them yesterday. A stupid attitude. They see you, you even look at them and you see them doing some funny things. You are trying to correct them and tell them something is wrong. Everybody in their eyes is a boyfriend. They don't know the difference between leaders. They are seeing their parents greeting a man of God and they come out and they are behaving all kinds of things. They think he's another toaster. No respect, no dignity. Are we together? Yeah. This is the carelessness that is happening in society. Do you know, to the point that if you bless a lady and give her 5,000, she will be looking at you and smiling. It's like she's waiting for the other side of the deal. What other side? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Because nobody helps for nothing. We live in a society where nobody helps for nothing. If I give you 10,000 naira, you know what to do tomorrow. See, listen, let me encourage you. I don't condemn you, but if there is any man in your life, please listen to me, listen to me, who you are exchanging money for going to meet that man, stop it this night. In the name of Jesus, say amen. amen. Say it. Amen. Send them text messages. Whether he's a lecturer or a military officer in judge, send him a text message after Koinonia and say, no weekend again, sir. He say, why? Say, a man of God I love so much has spoken. Oh, I will double what I'm giving you. That's not the issue. Are we together? It's very important. It's very disheartening. Please, if you're a parent here and you are listening to me, I'm not saying you sit down and probe your daughters. Ladies, please don't get it personal. But someone has got to talk to them. It's, it's, too, it's too much. It's too careless. It's too much. A daughter comes with a phone that even her father cannot buy. 250,000 naira phone. A laptop. Whatever it is. And nobody can ask a question. Nobody. Of course you cannot ask because you were never part of her life. You never contributed in making it happen. So is it today now you ask her where did the laptop come from? It's a terrible thing. See, when you see me close to my ladies in Koinonia here, it's for a reason. Many of them literally did not have that father figure in their life. Literally. The moment they are hungry, they know they must sleep with somebody. So for them, they are shocked having somebody that can bless your life. Genuinely. Okay, parents, we need, we have work to do. Many of our parents have really failed us. It's very important. But then we must take responsibility. Please, sisters, you are going to vow in the name of the Lord today. It's better for them to drive you away from school than you should. Do you know how many people you catch HIV today? Do you think the man who gave you the HIV? There are many people who move around you are seeing it looks like they are healthy. They, 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 aside from the spirit in them, spiritually speaking, curses, yokes, spells on their head, they land everything on your destiny. You are too small for that kind, of, that kind of thing. There are people who you see them young and small, but the things they have gone through, they can sell you and bring the change. 
they look at you as if they don't know anything. The Lord will help us. The Lord will seriously help us. Valentine is coming again. An opportunity for destroyers to emerge. From tomorrow, they are selling cakes now, selling balloons, selling letters, selling all kinds of things. They will come roaming around like wolves about to eat up the destinies of people. They leave their wives and their children. Some of them, their parents, some of the people that some of these men are looking for, the lady they are looking for is even the daughter of the man's friend. Is that true? Yeah. There are ladies that pride themselves in dealing with certain classes of men. We don't do all these small, small boys. No. Us, our own, we deal with Abuja kind. 99 days for the thief. The, the owner is not your husband. The owner is Jesus. The day the owner will come and say, look, I'm fed up with your life. You'll be in trouble. Men will go and catch HIV and come and give their wives. Women will catch HIV and give their husbands and kill themselves. I paid a lady's school fees today by the grace of God and to the glory of God. And it was a disheartening situation. Her registration was closing today. In one of, I don't even know the person in the university today. Her father and her mother both died of HIV and left two of them, taking care of themselves. I asked the lady, how have you been paying your school fees? She said, I do tailoring. I laughed. I said, I'm not a small child. How have you been paying your school fees? Answer me. What is you do tailoring? How much is your school fees and how much do you sew clothes? And that's when she shocked me and said she has been paying it by doing whatever she does with her pastor. <laughs> nothing goes for nothing. This is Nigeria. You can't, you can't eat your cake and have it. I live to praise your name. I have no fear. Of what tomorrow brings. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Proverbs 21 verse 20. I want to cast a spirit among men tonight. It's called the spirit of a waster. Write it down. The spirit of a waster. We must cast that spirit out of our brothers. The spirit of waste. Proverbs 21 verse 20. Wasted opportunities, wasted relationships. I like us to read it is projected. One to read. An oil in the dwelling of the wise. Uh-huh. But a foolish man spended it up. Look at me. You know, when I talk to many brothers, the first thing they tell me is apostle, times are hard. There's no money. I want to do business. There is no money. It's a lie. Look at me. God has been faithful to many brothers. If you are a tither at one point or the other in your life, God has been faithful. But many people in the body of Christ are wasters. Wasters of resources. Wasters of opportunities. Living a lie. Living a false life. Your salary is 50,000. But you are staying in a house of 500,000. You are a waster. Are we together? Your salary is 100,000. You are driving a car of 5.5. You are a waster. I told people, don't buy a car until you have money up to 10% of the value of that car consistently for maintenance. Your maintenance cost is approximately 10 to 20% of the overall value of the car you buy on a consistent basis many people go and collect loan from the bank instead of them to buy a simple car they buy different kinds of cars move around to prove a point you are earning 20,000 you are buying a material of 50,000 and you wear it and everybody around you does not know let me show you how Satan cheats Africans there are many of us, if you did not have the spirit of a waster, God has been faithful in your life. You would have raised up to a million naira right now to do responsible things. How about marriage? How we waste money in Africa? You get the best venue, hire the best people, you go and get a small boy 
and pay for that boy 30,000 naira to hold a ring. Can't you put it in your pocket? Of course, why are you laughing? Will he stop it from entering her hand? The spirit of a waster is destroying Nigerians. You are a student, you are wearing a suit of 50,000 and you pride yourself all around. I have this. No, sir. It's a waster. And we pastors have been victims of this because in an attempt to help people become successful, we put pressure on them to prove that the world is working. And in an attempt to show that the world is working, the money that God gave the guy to help him, he now uses it to buy a car as a 100 level student to show that he has faith. Faith is not foolishness. You are in 200 level, you are wearing a, 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 a weaver of, of 20,000. No. There are many students who are eating where certain lecturers are eating. Where a piece of meat, a big piece of meat is 500 naira. See that? And you eat three square meals a day. They give you 10,000 naira in a week you spent. Some of us have a spirit of spending. You can't rest till it finishes. It's a spirit. Waster. Are we together? You are wearing a shoe of this amount. Please, I'm talking to you. You have to square up. There are things in your life you can go and sell. That's your capital. Sell all those nonsense. You have three phones. Who are you calling? You are loading your phone with 10,000 naira in a month. That's somebody's salary. And you, all you are doing is gisting. Rooms that we give the devil to destroy our lives. Praise the Lord. You are not doing anything. Your barber comes to meet you. 1,000 naira per baby. Can't you go and kill? What are you rushing for? Are you getting what I'm saying now? There are people who don't have any money. You are not earning anything. You charter a car to wherever you want to go to. Let me show you how we waste money. 25,000 naira on a trip. Oh, I can't enter night bus. We have to fly. 30,000 naira. Economy is finished. Book business class. 45,000 naira. You are paying. You are flying away your destiny. Whereas with 5,000 naira, you can with honor. I'm not saying the days will not come for those things. But not now. Fake life. You see people living. Especially we men of God. Fake life. So that I will show that I'm anointed. You go and buy a watch of 100,000. You are wearing it. No, let me tell you. When you rise, everything around you rises. So when you fake it, nothing around you can resonate with the level you claim to have been. You don't know anybody that warrants that level of influence. When Koinonia started here, with crowds of people packed to outside, I will come on a bike. A bike. Miracle service. People are waiting. The next thing you hear sound of a bike, I will drop from it. Honorably with my Bible. And at that time, I was already blessed. Please, stop any fake life. We know you are responsible and we know God will help you. Brothers, am I speaking to you? This pressure of trying to look like Joshua Selman, you will die, oh, you don't know the fire I've passed through to come where I am. No, no, sir. This pressure of trying to do this. Visitors, if I am coming to your house, if all you have is water, keep it there. Don't go and borrow money to cook Turkey, I didn't ask you. God is faithful. I'm not coming for food. There are families, and we men of God, may God forgive us honestly. Because when any time they visit any family, they must prepare honorarium. Thank God no leader is doing that here. The day I hear that any leader in this place is going to anybody's house and saying they should package honorarium. Oh, no, 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 no. The God that sent me will judge that leader. Judge that leader that you go to anybody's house under the canopy of Koinonia and go and say they should give you. No, not every seed self is collectible. Some things are your birthright. You are collecting your honor and your dignity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is God helping us tonight? The spirit of waste. You start saving. You get 50,000 naira every day from your parents. That's a worker's salary. Yet, before half of the month, you are begging people who are on their own. 
your makeup kit is 20,000. Who cares? If you have the money, that's all right. There are some of us now, you are planning marriage. You've not gone anywhere. You've spent 2.5. What are you doing with it? Wedding gown, 500,000. To wear once. Are you wearing it every day? Suit, 100,000. There is a particular anko that this group, where is it in the Bible? If you don't have money, everybody should dress well. Just honor them. Will they deny that they are your parents? Must they dress in anko? Please hear what I'm saying, oh. If eat your size and grow gradually, God will honor you. Honeymoon, you want to travel out to where? If you don't have the money, explain to your wife. Honeymoon is a mentality, not, a, not an act. Africans waste money. I was sharing with some people today. 12 years celebration of getting born again. 13 years of getting filled with the Holy Spirit. Two years of being delivered from smoking. And we organize a big ceremony. We fly people from everywhere. December, the entire savings of Nigeria for January to November finishes in three days. Three days of hilarious living. You buy hamper 14,000 per one. You buy almost 20 to share because you are looking for a good name in church. No, sir. There are brothers here, you have no business buying a laptop. You don't have the money. There are sisters, you have no business buying certain materials. If all you have is one trouser, my brother, iron it with dignity. The God of heaven who sees you will honor you. You are not irresponsible. If you meet the sister and she doesn't like you because of the trouser, God just saved you from a bad wife. Go away and trust God for a lady who knows how to see in the spirit. Hallelujah. Don't put pressure on yourself. You enter any relationship that is a high maintenance relationship, killing you, book for counseling. Book for counseling fast and say, Apostle, I need help. I enter the, I, I, I'm not saying you are bad people. That's what counseling is for. To be able to talk to you and say, no, 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 I think you are spending too much. People get married and they don't have a house. They get married, they spend 2.5 million and they cannot afford 150,000 for a house because of the life of a waste. May the Lord deliver us from the spirit of waste. What of ministries that waste? Uncommanded projects. Projects that are not commanded by God. Oh, this other man of God is doing it. Let's do it too. A church comes and they don't have money simply because they are seeing people pay school fees. They now start paying people school fees and the entire reserve of the ministry disappears. Oh, they are buying a pulpit. Oh, they are buying this. This is five million. We must also buy it. Uncommanded project. Anywhere God has not taken me to, I'm not under pressure. I will get there for sure. Whether you believe it or not, I will get there. There are levels Koinonia has reached now by the grace of God and there are levels we have not reached. I will never put myself under pressure to get into those levels. Brother, your hand does not reach to buy a car. Be patient. Just take it easy. The God of heaven will give you. When favor comes upon your life, it will be like rain. In 24 hours, God will change your life. But by the time you force the door, it will open, but it will kill you. We are going to pray. Has anyone learned something tonight? God wants us to rise to be great men and women. First in our family lives, but also in every other thing. Every lady here trusting God for a good man. May the God that I serve bring a good man to your life. And any brother trusting God for a good woman, may God bring a good person. But you cannot reap a seed you are not sowing. You cannot sow the seed of a stupid man and reap a virtuous woman. You cannot reap, sow a seed of a wicked woman and reap an award-winning man. God is not that unjust. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that he shall reap. So ladies, please listen to me. As I round up. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be careful with some of this carnality and materialism. Be careful. I've challenged the brothers to be serious, but you must be careful. There is nobody... No tree, no matter how well you water and fertilize it, 
it will not become a giant oak tree in one day but there's potentials for it are you together now yeah there are people some of you admire if you saw them 10 20 years ago you will not like them but faith i saw one man of god when i saw his picture it was as if he was with rope he used to tie his waist you can use measuring tape and tie the waist his wedding with his wife she just stood as if they carried that cap as if they carried cap somewhere and just put on her head and the guy the guy should be a multi-millionaire if not a billionaire today he lavishes upon his wife like there's no tomorrow that's the price of taking the risk with the man if you are risk averse you sit down there is god helping us and brothers be responsible don't take for granted that i've told ladies to be responsible to be responsible and you sit down you are stingy you are greedy you are in a relationship valentine is coming you are pretending like you don't know plan you must do something on tuesday plan plan you have today saturday sunday monday tuesday morning plan so that you don't take for granted and say because some of those things are laziness please we must balance it brothers you must be serious Sisters, you must be serious. Make up your mind that you are going to make a good decision. Dissociate from any dangerous and poisonous relationship. Brother, you are in a relationship that is, is killing you, is eating you up spiritually and financially. I may not advise you to break, but I advise you to cry for help. Cry for help. Don't die in silence. Sister, you are in a relationship with a brother who is oppressing you and making nonsense out of your life because I said you should be virtuous. Cry for help. And if it's not changing, leave him. Leave him. It is scriptural to leave a relationship that does not represent where you are going. Are we together? We are going to pray. We will continue tomorrow during the workers retreat. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray, but I want, please, no moving around. No moving around. I want everyone to stand. Just, just stand still for a moment. And I want you to think about your life in one minute. Especially for the brothers. I want you to meditate upon your life in one minute. What will your 10 years be from now? What will your 20 years be? At the rate you are going with your life. At the rate of your mindset. At the rate at which your understanding is. What kind of results are you producing? Sister, look at your life now and be sincere between you and the God of heaven. The seeds you are sowing now, what kind of harvest do you see in front of you? Now, I want you to lift your voice before the God of heaven. In the next two or three minutes, cry. He says, my help comes from the Lord. Cry, 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 cry. Please, I want you to cry to God. I've said many things tonight and you know where it affects you. I want you to cry before God in one minute. Lord, I have seen a mindset. I've seen a mindset that is destructive. I need you to help me. I'm a godly brother, but I've seen that I've been irresponsible. I have been lazy. Lazy about my relationship. Lazy about my life. I've been giving flimsy excuses. I take responsibility tonight. Are you praying? lady and have allowed a wrong mindset a materialistic mindset a mindset that is carnal to consume me I ask you for help lift your voice and pray if every other thing I said tonight touched you anywhere please lift your voice and cry to the God of God for help Responsible as a father, pray. You are connecting with us online. Pray. I not be responsible as a husband to my wife, to my children. I take responsibility tonight. Hallelujah.
prayer point number two father take away every spirit of indiscipline laziness and wastage and irresponsibility let it live my life forever lift your voice and pray laziness mental laziness entitlement mentality waiting for father to do this for me waiting for mother to do this for me flimsy excuses are you praying please pray this is your destiny pray this is your destiny pray this is your destiny hallelujah hallelujah lord break any relationship in my life love relationship wrong associations that are contributing to my downfall in life let them be scattered now i don't care how long any wrong friend wrong associate wrong whatever it is pray i break it now i break it now no negotiation i break it now friends that give me wrong counsel I destroy it now shaka parata kata shaka ta praka teli ba shiba na 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 I was not a thief until I joined certain people and they made me to be a thief now I was not a bad girl until I joined certain cabals break free from those relationships Hallelujah. Two more prayer points. Prayer point number three. Father, give me direction. First, over marriage and over every area of my life. I, I confess that I'm confused. Give me direction. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and cry out. Lord, I need direction. Concerning the issue of marriage. I need direction. If you are married, pray. Lord, concerning my family, right now, I don't even know what to do. Things are not working in my family. You've got to help me, oh God. Direction on what to do as a father. Financial direction on what stream of income to put your hands on. Don't just do anything because everybody is doing anything direction on how to go as a pastor direction on my marriage direction on a life partner direction hallelujah let me add one more prayer point before the last one you're going to say lord walk in me and walk on me anything that makes me not to be the ideal wife anything don't pray for husband yet lord whatever makes me a bad wife whatever makes me a bad husband whatever makes ladies run away from me whatever makes men run away from me i humble myself tonight and i ask that you take it from me walk on me walk on me lift your voice and pray what is driving my husband away from me? What is driving my wife away from me? Is there something I'm doing wrong? What is driving my destiny helper away from me? What is driving the anointing away from me? What is driving favor away from me? What is driving breakthrough? Pray from your heart. There must be something I'm doing wrong. Why does my husband not love me? I may be getting it wrong somewhere. Why does my wife not love me? 
I must be getting it wrong somewhere. Why is our relationship up today and down tomorrow? Something must be wrong. I take responsibility. No passing blames. Hallelujah. Last prayer point and we're done for this night. Listen carefully. We're going to pray this prayer point before I make the altar call. There is a dimension I didn't have time to talk about. Maybe tomorrow if God grants us time during the workers retreat, I will explain. It's called the suffering help of God. Listen, listen. Ah, yeah. Brothers and sisters, God can help a man. I am a testimony of a man that God has helped. The Bible says, and Uzziah was marvelously helped of the Lord. A young man, to, for a young man to be established in Nigeria is hard. I, I admit it, it's hard. There are no jobs. Every society gets its employment from the private sector. And if the private sector is not robust in any economy, there is no job. I know the probability of an average young man to be established before 30 in Nigeria now I tell you the line is very slim if he's to follow everything justly by God when will you write jam and finish strikes in school before you finish and all the trouble that comes with sentiments and tradition you need help brothers it's neither by strength not by power when I found out that my strength was too small to give me the result I played my role and ran to God I, I want to give you the next two minutes I don't know how you will pray this prayer but you are going to say Lord if you don't help me I will move forward home. I, I am tired please cry, cry, cry cry God can help men oh he has been our Ebenezer as a ministry we are a testimony of men that God has helped. My life today is a testimony of how, a, of how God can help a man. Cry for his help. Cry for his help. Don't pretend you don't need it. Don't pretend you don't need it. In his help there is favor. In his help there is protection. In his help there is honor. In his help there is restoration. In his help there is speed. There is advancement. Help me, oh God. Help me over the issue of marriage. Help me over the issue of business. Help me over the issue of my children. Help me over the issue of my family. Help me over the issue of my character. Help me over the issue of everything, my career. I admit that I need your help. For he is our ever-present help. Ever-present help. Ever-present help. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. If you forget anything I've shared tonight, don't forget that God can help me. You will be foolish to imagine he cannot help. My God, the God I serve, look at my life. That God cannot help a ministry. Look around and bring one koinonia poster that you've seen on the road. That God cannot help a people. Look at the financial records of the millions of naira spent by this ministry. Dead free completely. Not owing any man as a ministry dead or alive. Listen, brothers and sisters, God can help a man. I tell you, he can deliver you. He can protect you. Some of us have been trying on our strength. We are going to pray that prayer one more time and say, Lord, I give up my strength. I lay down my pride. Please help me. Help me to be established. I'm getting older and older and at the rate of the way things are going, my job cannot establish me. My salary cannot establish me. My business cannot establish me. I need help from heaven.
keep standing everyone inside outside and all the people following us online whatever nation you are in it doesn't matter distance is no barrier please listen i want to make a very serious altar call now two in one first and foremost those who are say man of god have been waiting for this call because i'm about to run to jesus right now i don't like the way my life is going i need jesus you don't need counseling for some people you need jesus there's no level of counseling that will re that will replace lack of the life of god don't sit down this is not an initiation to be a christian this is a serious affair with your destiny are we together now the second group of people are those that are saying lord i'm coming before you to truly repent i'm asking you to help me i'm asking you to help me with all my heart you may not be sleeping around you may not be drinking you may not be smoking but you know your life is as scattered as whatever and you know that you have not been walking in the ways of god you are saying lord my pride is what has brought me to this trouble i need your help fast these two categories of people please if you are outside start running just before we come i'm going to count one to five it's not by force there is nothing tonight that is by force but i tell you you need jesus you need jesus jesus is the answer start coming for the world today run like there's fire on the mountain there's no jesus is the way coming i want you to run from any of the overflows join them those following us online there is still hope for you listen let me tell you the truth i don't care what has happened in your life the lord jesus will give you a new beginning it doesn't matter but you will only give those who can receive he said as many as received him you can reject him hallelujah those of you in front lift your right hand to heaven you are not reciting a poem this is not a memory verse. This is not a recitation. This is a simple guide to help you make a powerful decision. Say after me from the depth of your heart. And if you didn't come out here and you are part of them, those online, say it where you are. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you to help me tonight. I have come before you sincerely asking you to intervene in my life I receive your life into my spirit and I declare that from today my sins are forgiven I have the life of God I move forward ever and backward never the power of Satan the power of sin and the flesh is broken over my life in the name of Jesus Keep your hands lifted lord jesus there is no man who can be perfect by himself outside of you you are our righteousness our holiness and our perfection i pray for these ones who have come in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven by the blood of jesus and i declare by the power of the holy spirit that a new life starts for you today the grace to be responsible and to rise like an edifice is released upon you in the name of Jesus may your path be like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day in the name of Jesus Christ every guilt every condemnation over your life I declare that it leaves your life now and forever in the mighty name of Jesus amen and amen God bless you for this great decision please follow who's there follow someone waving his or her hands okay okay lady she's waving her hands all of you this way just follow them. Please provide your details as required.
and the Lord will help you. Glory be to your name. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's hold hands together and just pray in the spirit in one minute that the spirit of revelation will be mighty upon us even as we hear what the Lord has for us tonight. Go ahead and pray. Praise the Lord. Pray in other tongues. You're preparing your spirit to receive the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. You are our God and we believe in you. We believe in your ability. We believe in your power. We believe in your wisdom. You are a mighty God and we are believers. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, you were sent to us as the spirit of wisdom, as the spirit of revelation. We're gathered here tonight because we're passionate about knowing you and understanding your ways, accessing your power and walking in dominion we ask you tonight that you open our minds open our spirits open our eyes give us capacity to comprehend to understand the secrets of the kingdom we have come again oh god we declare that except you teach us we cannot understand except you open up our minds we cannot comprehend so we cry dear spirit of the living god that you prevail over us until the word of God becomes spirit and life. And I pray that the grace to manifest the realities of this truth. That that grace also be supplied us tonight. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. You know, I never, I never get I never stop getting humbled by the kinds of miracles and the mighty things that we hear every time we're gathered here I want to encourage us to not get used to these things you know there's a way you can get so familiar oh is the healing again oh is the breakthrough again your heart must always be in a posture where you receive every miracle no matter how great no matter how little with gratitude in your heart if it could not be done by man then he deserves the glory for it are we together if it could not be done by man then he deserves the glory for it lord jesus we thank you hallelujah tonight i'm going to be teaching but i really believe that um I know we have a miracle service coming, but I, I just sense that as I teach tonight, 
there will be a grace to lift burdens from people not just a grace for healing i sense this right from home that as the word of god comes all of a sudden just in the silence you're seated inside or outside or following online you find out that a grace comes upon you prevails over you and all of a sudden a burden is lifted faith is stirred up within you you find out that one infirmity just roaming around your body just leaves just like that listen let me tell you something john chapter 11 and verse 40 said jesus was speaking and said did i not say unto you that if you believe you will see the glory of god there is a relationship between your experience of the glory and your believing god did i not say unto you that if you believe you will see the glory if you believe if you sit down doubting wondering oh can god touch me look the the we learn from scripture that there is nothing that is new under the sun it's true are we together people have been oppressed and the lord took them out of that oppression people have been challenged and the lord took them out of it your assignment is not only to listen but to listen in faith to listen in hope expecting acts chapter 4 when you read the bible says the man looked at them expecting to receive something you can look casually just hoping that the service will run and finish but again your heart can be opened i really believe i'm a firm believer that every experience if god is there something must happen to you i'm not necessarily talking about falling down and manifesting physically but you should live who will not want to attend this service where you are sure you will not be the same nobody wants to attend the service and after the grace there literally is nothing you should know that you have been visited his wisdom comes his power comes his authority comes faith is built your conviction is strengthened these are characteristics of the presence of god i believe that this is what the lord will do in the name of jesus christ amen where's binga please play play me um the strings the anointing is on him tonight you guys just follow him closely but um i just lay down to sleep a little and then i saw him playing the string so i knew that um just just play minor keys for me and let's trust god to do great things tonight lord we bless you one of the all over the world this is this is the period of easter and generally speaking once it is easter period across the christian community pastors usually narrow their teachings around redemption around the cross um, every man of god attempts to help the people or remind them once again of the significance of the cross the significance of the death of jesus his passion and everything revolving around it and um, as i meditated upon the things that i'll be sharing tonight i i just felt very strongly stirred in my heart that the lord would want me to teach rather on um, issues that relate to taking advantage um, validating the death of jesus his resurrection using our lives you see as a leader i have had the privilege of blessing people teaching them truth and all of that my greatest joy is to see the word produced in your own life so i can imagine that the joy that is in the heart of the father is not just that we keep commemorating periods like this but that we walk in the experience of what that death was meant for are we together now when the father looks from the throne and sees people dying of lassa fever dying being buffeted by satan it doesn't matter what discussion about easter we make it's a mockery hallelujah the experience of the victory of christ is what gives um consolation to the heart of the father especially at periods like this 
so i just thought to share something with us tonight that i believe will bless us open your heart and um, let's see what the lord will guide us to understand first corinthians chapter 2 Let the weight of your glory fall Let it cover all the earth Let the weight of your glory fall Let it cover all the earth let the weight of your glory fall Let it cover all the earth Let it cover all the earth Let it cover all the earth let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all the earth. First Corinthians chapter 2. If we can read it, it's a long reading. But let's use Amplified. Paul began to teach something very powerful. And I want us to look very closely. Verse 1. It says, As for myself, brethren, when I came to you, we're using Amplified. I did not come proclaiming to you the testimony and evidence or mystery and secret of God concerning what he has done through Christ for the salvation of men in lofty words or human philosophy and wisdom there are 16 verses we are reading everything for i resolved to know nothing to be acquainted with nothing to make display of the knowledge of nothing you know among you except jesus christ and him crucified now paul begins by saying look when i came my goal was to present to you christ crucified and then to buttress on the significance of what that should mean to your life so he said i have many things what he's trying to say here is that look i'm a pharisee i'm not dull there are many other things i can tell you but i have limited the scope of my communication to you to reveal christ and him crucified i could tell you about all that things but when i came to you i have an option to teach you other things but for some reason my goal is to be able to present to you christ crucified and then to be able to help you understand the full import the gravity of what his crucifixion can bring are you understanding what he's saying here now and so he's saying and i was you know fear trembling and so on and so forth verse four sorry amplified opens it up so i will jump some things now verse four says and my language and my message were not set forth in persuasive enticing and plausible words of wisdom but they were in the demonstration of the holy spirit and power now don't miss the context the context is christ crucified he says the theme of my communication is christ crucified so every other thing that follows from this explanation is predicated upon that foundation christ when i came to you my message started with christ crucified so every other thing that i'm going to reveal to you is connected to this foundation of christ crucified are we following now so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men human philosophy but in the power of god verse 6 it says yet when we were among the full grown you know king james says that we speak this wisdom give us give us king james and then we'll run to amplify it to see verse six we'll, we'll just play around with it it says how be it we speak wisdom 
among them that are perfect or mature now so look at his progression the apostle starts by saying look ladies and gentlemen when i came to you i had an option to begin to teach you other things to teach you the 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 to display the fruits of my intelligence i'm a pharisee i'm a doctor of the law i'm a learned colleague but i chose to limit myself to present to you christ crucified and then he begins to say that i have done this because i don't want you to just brag about intelligence i want your life to be limited to this reality alongside the blessings that come from it are we together now then he is now switching and saying look that we speak wisdom so he has moved to the subject of wisdom now christ crucified and then wisdom yet not the wisdom of this world nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. verse 7 it says but we speak the wisdom of god in a mystery now look very carefully don't assume you understand what he's saying we speak the wisdom of god but is communicated in a mystery christ crucified the foundation of my teaching when i came to you i came to teach you something about easter but i'm more concerned i have other options but i have noticed a lapse in your life and there is a dimension i want you to come into at is tied to the revelation of christ crucified alongside the benefits that comes from it and then he says that we speak the wisdom of god in a mystery then he says even the hidden wisdom let's see what amplified says about it seven amplified but rather what we are setting forth is the wisdom of god once hidden from the human understanding and now revealed to us by god it says that wisdom which god devised and decreed before the ages for our glory amplified says our glorification let's go back to king james so the bible says seven please and king james i'm, I'm explaining something just walk with me media verse 7 and king james but we speak the wisdom of god in a mystery listen carefully it says which god ordained for our what so christ crucified we see the cross there is a revelation from there and part of the benefits that come from there is an ability of the spirit to access what the bible calls the hidden wisdom and it says whoever hand can access this that god preserved it that it is this formula that will be responsible for the glorification of the saints that this hidden wisdom whatever it is has a part to play in our revealing the glory of god that god himself ordained it before the foundations of the world for our glory verse 8 which none of the princes of this world knew for had they known it now he connects it back again for had they known it they would not have crucified so if they did not crucify there would not be the issue of the cross and there will not be access to this hidden wisdom that has to do with our glorification verse 9 but as it is written i had not seen nor ear heard this is in context of that same wisdom are we together now when you're studying scripture make sure you keep following the line don't just speak a scripture and delve he's communicating something here i have not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things which god had prepared for them that love him verse 10 now we see the holy spirit introduced into the equation the bible says but god had revealed them unto us by his spirit for the spirit searcheth all things yea the the bible calls the hidden wisdom of god the deep things of god not the things of god the deep things of god so he starts by saying i came to you and i present to you christ crucified that if you understand the mystery of christ crucified alongside the benefits one of the benefits if you are well taught one of the things you should be taught is that the implication of his crucifixion now has brought you to a realm where you can access what the bible calls the hidden wisdom of god 
so christ did not just die just to give us eternal life alone yes ultimately but that there are there are certain implications of his death and one of them tied to his crucifixion are we together now is the ability to access what the bible calls the hidden wisdom of god and the bible says that hidden wisdom was prepared by god himself that at a point in the church age man will buy a technology called a mystery remember he said we speak this wisdom the goal is for you to access it but between you and that wisdom is a mystery you must understand it is not the wisdom that is the mystery the mystery is the name of the technology that transfers that mystery that wisdom from god to you he said we speak it in a mystery i go to sabo in a vehicle the vehicle is not me the goal is to take me to sabo but the means of transportation is called a vehicle the means of accessing this wisdom the bible says is a mystery so we are going to find out what this mystery is tonight and the bible says whoever finds that mystery will access the wisdom of god and the result of that encounter is glory glory that the saints in light don't just become glorified just because they want to on account of the death of jesus christ there is something that his death granted unto us are we together now and the bible says that if you find out one of those things that the death of jesus christ provided for you the hidden wisdom of god that is accessed through a mystery i stop because remember paul is teaching here and then paul now begins to introduce the person of the holy spirit as the searcher of the wisdom of god but he said my my point now let's leave the holy spirit issue we're coming there what is the mystery that communicates this thing that the bible calls the deep things the deep things what are they because whoever can access these deep things the bible calls them the hidden wisdom that not even the men of the world nor the princes knew if if they had known that the goal of jesus's death among other things was to grant us access to that mystery so that we will be glorified he said they would have made sure the lord of glory did not die are we together Galatians chapter 3 we're coming back here Galatians chapter 3 please give us from verse 10 you will be so blessed tonight my prayer for you is that the things you are going to learn you will so understand them and they will produce strange victory in your life in the name of jesus christ for as many as are of the works of the law are under the cause for it is written cost is everyone that continued not in the things that are written in the book of the law read on next verse please but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of god it is evident for the just shall live by faith 12 it says and the law is not of faith but that man but the man that doeth them shall live in them 13 then he says christ hath redeemed us from the cause of the law and he tells us how he did that he says being made a cause for it is written cause is everyone that hangs on a tree we see the cross back again are we together now remember paul said christ crucified christ crucified that's his message when i came to you i looked at a lapse in your life than the foundation to remedy that lapse is a revelation of Christ crucified and the full import of what the crucifixion does to you but I'm choosing an aspect of it that you can access the deep things of God on the strength of this revelation of Christ crucified and on the strength of those deep things you can manifest glory the Bible says that the blessing of Abraham I've taught you the blessing of Abraham is not cars 
not money the blessing of abraham is not even what we call the blessing the blessing of abraham is what the bible calls justification by faith that's the blessing of abraham the bible says abraham believed god and it was credited to him as righteousness so we like faithful abraham we believe god and then we are justified by believing him that the blessing of abraham justification by faith might come upon the gentiles through jesus christ and notice this he says that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith so all of this journey is to make sure that even when we are justified that's not the end of it that we get to a point where we may receive the promise of the spirit there is something about a technology that transfers the spirit into a man and the bible says it was because christ became a curse on the cross are we together now and then we believe in that substitutionary sacrifice like we call it and the implication is that we are justified by faith what does that mean we are declared not guilty we are declared blameless having the righteousness of god the righteousness of god is his very nature are we together on account of that righteousness the bible now declares that the spirit of god can come upon us we receive the promise of the spirit through faith then it stops there paul now is trying to explain to the people when the holy spirit comes what does he do when the holy spirit comes what is the implication if there was no cross there would not be death if there was no death there would not be burial there would not be resurrection there would not be exaltation justification and that meant that there would be no access to receive the life of god there would be no access to receive justification and ultimately we will not be able to access the person of the holy spirit the final journey was to make sure that every man can become a host of the spirit of god and the bible says if satan had known that that death was a string leading from one place they will make sure that the process did not even start are you getting what paul is teaching them now had they known that the whole goal was not to punish a man but to use a man like a scapegoat and transfer the spirit of god in men he said they would insist that jesus did not die are we together let's go back to our scripture first corinthians chapter 2 okay just leave us stand there but god had revealed them to us by his spirit are you seeing now so he has revealed them to us by his spirit we have accessed that spirit and so we have capacity to receive revelation from him and then he says something interesting he says for the spirit which spirit the same spirit we have received he's telling us certain things the spirit can do and one of it is that the spirit can search all things the deep things of god now we are investigating how to arrive there the bible tells us where the deep things are stored we're going to see it closely it says the deep things of god then he now digresses to explain something he said for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of that man which is in him even so the things of god knoweth no man but the spirit are we together now so we know that the only person who can access whatever it is in god is the spirit of god you cannot receive anything from god without the spirit helping you do we agree next verse now we have received say i have received it says not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of god why did we receive him it says that we may know that we may not just that we may feel spiritual that the spirit among other things is resident in us that we may know the things that are freely given did you hear the bible says god prepared certain things to be given to the saints for our glorification go back please to verse just go back to verse um, five now i believe from where we talk about the mystery it says okay verse 3 i think it's verse 3 um okay six 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 i think it should be six 
how be it thank you we speak the wisdom of god among them that are perfect the word perfect is matured yet not the wisdom of this world not the prince of this world that come to naught verse 7 but we speak the wisdom of god in a mystery so this wisdom is spoken but it is spoken in a mystery a mystery that god ordained are we together and the bible lets us know that by that mystery we can access everything that is given to us there is a spiritual system for accessing the deep things of god listen if you understand what i teach you tonight you will know from where strange and unusual songs come from if you understand what i teach you tonight you will know where strange ideas and supernatural solutions come from the bible tells you that in as a result of the death of christ that you can access the mind not just the mind of christ the mind of the father that resident there is the hidden wisdom called the deep things of god he says whoever can find it the holy spirit brings it to you but there is a mystery you must engage listen the holy spirit is many things one of what he is is a searcher but he does not just search until the mystery is engaged there is a mystery that you engage he no longer becomes a comforter he no longer becomes a he starts to search there is something that can be done on earth that switches the ministry of the spirit to go to the mind of the father and start searching the deep things and bring it to you and he says if you find it your life will spell glory paul is teaching them paul looked at their lives and said no everything i see happening to you should happens to human beings i don't see you accessing realities from another realm he said let me teach you something i i wanted to teach you a lot of things but i see there is no glory in your life let's start the lecture the foundation is christ crucified that when jesus christ hung on that cross the implication of everything that happened at calvary was to the end that we be justified comma to the end that we receive the spirit because no man knows what is in the heart of the man except that spirit so the father allowed his spirit who knows what is in his heart to be domiciled in every believer but the bible says that the spirit of god is many things he's a counselor he's an advocate but there is a mystery that can be engaged that will make the spirit to live whatever he's doing and start searching the mind of the father and bring to the saints something called the deep things he said the hidden wisdom and says god prepared it for my glorification many people have taught that this mystery is just to blast in tongues and once you blast in tongues the holy spirit starts searching how many times have you prayed in tongues in your life and you have seen that you prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing happened but we speak this mystery when we come to those who are matured and we speak the wisdom of god in a mystery do you know what paul is saying he's saying i am when i come to mature believers i know that i cannot teach them peripheral things i have to teach them the deep things of god but when i come to them i engage this mystery and the spirit of god starts to download deep things and it is those deep things i give them when i come to those who are matured he says we speak this miss this wisdom to them but in a mystery a mystery that only the holy ghost can deliver unto men listen i show you a secret tonight that is the secret of depth eternally there's no such thing as being bankrupt you find this you apply this in your life in your business you will come up with things that will shock men everybody will know that this one this one cannot be from the earth realm it's not the wisdom of men so you can't learn it in school it's not the wisdom of the princes of this world so no elder can advise you into it this one is only available 
it was taught in the mind of God himself and only the spirit can access the mind of Christ but your own assignment is to find out what the mystery is the Bible says anytime that mystery is engaged the Holy Ghost starts to search <laughs> there is a spiritual system for accessing deep hidden revelations there is a spiritual system for accessing strategies there are people on earth who have found this secret and their life becomes an unending wonder it looks like there is a fountain within them they have learned how to tap into an ability that is higher and greater than their age their level their education their everything this is what i want to teach you if you have this i can tell you happy easter if you don't have this we can rejoice for nothing and eat and go back and there is no glory in our lives there is a relationship between the sufferings of christ and the glory that follows the sufferings of christ and the glory that follows the sufferings of christ culminated in his crucifixion it didn't start in his crucifixion the sufferings of christ started right from his passion at gethsemane i hope you know that at gethsemane that's where christ became the second adam because two things happened to adam in the garden of eden first adam lost what we call righteousness right the nature of god he lost it he still had the likeness of god but he lost the image the holy spirit he lost so if christ were to be the second adam he would have to lose those two things too are we together now yes and the only condition for christ to lose righteousness is to become sin and he became sin through what we call in theology the doctrine of interpenetration that's what the communion is the mystery that two people become one a Jimmy and his wife now as far as god is concerned are one she has her own body he has his body but in the realm of the spirit they are one whatever accesses him can access her without permission if he agrees she will pay for it because they have become one are we are we together now and the bible says that when that communion was broken remember i think i've taught this many times in this place that the reason why there were 12 men you see do you know why it was only men in 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 um in, in the upper room that's where they had the communion they were men because men are the carriers of the seeds and sin is transferred through reproduction are we together now women don't carry the seeds women only receive the seed and give birth to another life so the men there were standing 12 of them in number 12 is the number of government so they were there it was the whole world prophetically entering into that covenant where man can now christ can now take up the nature of man that's why he said if you eat my flesh and drink my blood you have your life so he broke himself and said eat and it gave access for him to carry the whole nature of man watch this then he went to gethsemane and he began to cry he said father if it be thy will let this cup pass what cup the cup was not death the cup was the holy spirit leaving him because the moment the holy spirit leaves him he cannot be in touch with heaven again <laughs> remember the connect of the mind remember it is the spirit When he said, Eloi, Eloi, Lamak Sabachthani, did the father reply? Because that which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. The Holy Spirit was not with Jesus on the cross. If he was with Jesus, the nails would not enter his hands. He had to leave Jesus. That was where the cry was happening. For the first time, the Trinity would be separated. And he said, can this cup, this cup of disunion, can it pass off me? He said, but it has to happen. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. That was the reason why when they held him from that time, everything that happened to him was happening to Adam and whoever came from Adam. You see that now? then when he was hung on that cross the bible tells us that you know the nails and everything and he stood there and listen to what he said he said father into thy hands i commend my spirit 
Jesus now went to hell. I hope you know that Jesus went to hell to fight Satan, not with the assistance of the Holy Spirit. He went as man, Adam, to hell. The Holy Ghost was not there. No, it was not there at all. You see that? If the Holy Ghost was there, Jesus would not be able to go where he's going. Are we together now? And he stood there, defeated Satan, collected the keys. And then on the third day, that same spirit that had left him now came back. If that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, the Bible says, if that same spirit dwells now today in your mortal body, it would do certain things. I'm just giving us a little, you know, just playing with our minds a little. Let's go back to what we're discussing. He said that there is a mystery that activates the Holy Spirit searching the deep things of God and revealing it to us and it says tied to it is our glorification among the many things listen carefully among the many things that this mystery can bring is to transport the superior wisdom of God and to reveal them to man through the spirit that part of the blessings of the crucifixion of Christ and the import of redemption is the ability to engage a mystery that causes the Holy Spirit to search the deep things of God and reveals to man the mystery that controls creativity the mystery that controls innovation the mystery that controls divine strategy the mystery that controls supernatural solutions the mystery that can stir up every dormant gifting and ability in man the hidden mystery let's discuss the technology of activating this mystery Jesus number one write this down the first thing I want you to note is that the mind of God is a compendium of infinite wisdom write it down the mind of God God has a mind the Bible says that the spirit can search everything in the mind of God even the deep things so write it down that God's mind God himself his mind is full of infinite wisdom number two whatever this mystery is we know that it is engaged by speaking write it down we're establishing something now please just help those under the anointing let's be sensitive i believe that god will be giving a lot of impartations the mystery is engaged by speaking so we know that for the activation of this mystery your mouth has a role to play now listen very carefully number three you see this thing we call speaking in tongues look at me everybody look at me we have missed a lot in it those who taught us speaking in tongues taught us that every time you open your mouth you are doing the same thing speaking in tongues has dimensions and all those dimensions have allocations in the spirit for what they achieve just because it looks like you are doing the same thing so you think every time you are speaking in tongues this mystery is activated by speaking there is the speaking in tongues that is for intercession there is the speaking in tongues that is engaging the mystery that makes the spirit of god to start searching the deep things of god it's not just that because you open your mouth you are praying i'm going to guide you you will understand what i'm saying shortly it is the mystery of speaking in an unknown tongue listen but the goal is not intercession nor supplication the goal is a system of reception that speaking in tongues is not only an instrument for intercession there is a dimension of tongues that you speak to receive you receive things in the spirit by engaging that mystery not just interceding for sinners not just praying there is a dimension of the hidden wisdom of god that every time you begin to utter tongues with that revelation and with that consciousness the holy spirit does not just come as an intercessor it's a message you are sending to the spirit that i am in need of a mystery and the holy spirit says i get the message you are saying 
there is a way you can pray that he knows i'm interceding for a sinner he joins you there is a way you can pray but that there is a tongue you can utter from the earth that is a message to the holy ghost i am stranded i need something for my glory and he goes and starts to search most of us think every time we pray in tongues because it sounds the same you think you are saying the same thing those who have taught praying in tongues have only taught it with respect to accessing spiritual power like okay power if you want power just pray in tongues or if you want to feel like you're a prayer warrior there are all kinds of dimensions the same electricity powers a keyboard the same electricity powers fan the same electricity but there is a way you can channel it there is a dimension of tongues that is not for intercession it is a dimension the moment you utter it the spirit of god goes to the mind of the father that the end of that tongues is a revelation of something you did not know before you started praying that tongues cannot stop with you say amen and you go back no way no way Mm -mm. you don't just pray and finish the one you are praying when you pray just say thank you jesus lord i give you all the glory because you were interceding and you were building up your spirit man but that when you engage these tongues something must leave god and manifest physically you can hold it and say this is the answer i give you thanks then the secret was revealed to daniel a king came and said tell me my dream and the interpretation otherwise i would destroy you daniel showed us i don't know what daniel did in the night he said king there is no man that can know this thing no he said but wait before you kill us give me time in the night when others will help that lady please in the night when i don't know what daniel did but all i know is that daniel tapped into a frequency in the spirit and Daniel received this let me tell you this listen very carefully I know this because there was a prayer Daniel was praying that made Gabriel to come to earth not to fight but to bring a message it's in your Bible he was praying a prayer many people say that no it was not a it was not just a prayer of warfare it, Gabriel said I am sent something about your prayer called heaven i am come with the answer understanding and the bible says this mystery god ordained it for our glory daniel was an ordinary man these saints in the bible were ordinary people it is these mysteries that turn them to become like gods upon the earth what kind of men are these they want to kill somebody and a human being with flesh and blood says give me time he goes to the secret place and says king i have your answer and the king looked at him the dreamer forgot his dream the dreamer forgot his dream and someone went to bed and all of a sudden came back this one is not word of knowledge oh this is a download of a strategy word of knowledge gives you in part this one comes to give you an information imagine what that would do to your life imagine that you can tap let me tell you listen without this strategy you will never move forward in life you will get to points where you will stay grounded nothing on earth has the capacity to move you and the spirit of god just stands and, oh i'm born again ba, 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 ba. you can pray for three hours and intercede for everybody and the holy ghost will say if you know this is what apostle paul that guy was a dangerous guy that paul you see paul came and saw the believers and knew what was wrong he knew what was wrong with their spiritual life you guys are zealous you guys pray all the time but there's something you don't have let me teach you remember they were filled with the holy ghost already what he did in chapter 12 14 was to explain to them but paul saw that they were not maximizing certain things he said let me teach you you see all these mysteries i share let me show you how they come this is paul teaching now paul says i am ordinary some of the apostles knew jesus before me 
but i was taught this mystery and every time i engage it it was while paul was doing this that the holy ghost brought him a mystery he said church let me arrange the gifts of the spirit now in a way that will profit the body that's not normal you don't do that by education let me tell you there are things God has brought to me by this truth you see ba, when the truth of scripture comes to you from heaven you may not be able to share everything but there are truths some of this system of operating in the anointing this is how they came a visitation son this is how this thing works if you understand what i'm saying brothers and sisters the next time you go to pray many of you will have some of you have done it unconsciously that's why you see people come to testify i went to bed and i had a visitation no nobody just comes they are called they may use the face of a man they may god had mercy on you you just knew you were praying something about your prayer called heaven listen read your bible and see men who called heaven some did not get an answer some got an answer the bible calls it a mystery how could god leave men on earth without an assistance do you think god knows god does not know that you need to prosper do you think god does not know? imagine the sicknesses in this world do you not know that even the anointing most of us are stranded we don't even know how to use it effectively it is the holy ghost that comes look at jesus jesus saw a man and knew that the only thing that will heal this man is to spit on the ground he never repeated it again a mystery that came look at how joshua it was divine strategies that gave people victory in the bible none of those strategies were repeated again they happened just once they, they, how can a man look and say I will go over a, a Jericho seven times knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and can look at that gentleman who gave a testimony he had it's a it's a true testimony i got i got it too he broke his I, I i don't know whether he broke his teeth or i think they were supposed to remove four of his teeth or something an accident and then something else happened to him and the gentle i don't know what he did though but the gentleman said he went to bed and all of a sudden a revelation comes and he gets up and he's god nothing just happens like that it's not true there is a dimension of god's glory that will never manifest in our lives for as long as all you think will bring you glory and greatness in life is just certificate or wisdom from age or just searching google how to be rich enter how to do business enter how to be a good wife enter for as long as that's what you are doing that's sophia the wisdom of men there is a superior dimension most of us know it but you think it just comes just by looking at the bible alone no there is a dimension where you can call for the assistance of heaven there are certain things let me tell you god taught me about the anointing he taught me not by saying he taught me by imparting that knowledge i can't teach it because it was not through words it's, it's a lecture but it came like a software see what makes men unusual is the mysteries that upgrade their lives not their skin not their body when you see an ordinary person and you see a dimension of result that is not human go back and ask either a witch or a wizard appear to that person or something must have happened in the realm of the spirit hmm. are we together that you can go back and look at your family and they can say what is special about the easter and he said lord there has to be an answer to what is happening in this family are you not seeing the way our families are how many of you have seen that the solution cannot come from it the deep thing 
things of God. There are pastors stranded in ministry. Look at the foolish instructions people do to rise in life. It does not sound human. But because it came from the mind of God, it produces strange results. Go around the city seven times. Because it came to a man. He went around and the city collapsed. Are we blessed? I'm sharing with you a reality that I've worked in myself. Stupid things. But came. I know how to call for help from heaven. If you don't know in this wicked world, the devil will eat you up and spit out your bones. It's not every tongue that is just for building up your spirit. There is a dimension of praying in tongues that is a cry of mercy in the realm of the spirit. I need assistance. Oh God, I am stranded. Except you help from heaven, I cannot do anything. And all of a sudden, an emissary is sent from the realm of the spirit and comes to deliver as desired. Paul said, the hidden wisdom that God ordained for our glory. Are you getting blessed now let's continue let me show you something go to verse 10 verse 10 please sit down sit down thank you sit down it says but god has revealed them to us listen carefully it says by his spirit for the spirit searched all things yea the deep things of god that's why we stop right now paul is trying to explain to them that the holy spirit is the searcher of these things but now he's telling us that there is a limitation to this thing. And here's the limitation. Go ahead. He says, okay, if we've, we've read, go to verse 12. Verse 12. Now we have received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us. 13. Which things we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual 14 but the natural man now watch this this is the limitation to this experience once you are natural excuse me once you are natural it says but the natural man cannot receive these things why it says for they are the nature of that mystery is such that you must be a child to be able to receive it is too childish for natural people to access it what is it in a dance and breakthrough what is it in an instruction and miracle alert these are manifestations of the hidden wisdom of god for they are foolishness unto him neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned two more verses 15 but he that is spiritual judged all things yet he is judge of no man 16 for who had known the mind of the lord that he may instruct him the word instruct him there is not just to direct him who had known let's let's see what amplify says amplify puts it beautifully there give us amplify for who has known or understood the mind the counsel and the purposes of the lord so as to guide and instruct him and give him knowledge he said but we have the mind of christ and do hold the thoughts the feelings and the purposes of his heart it's a question he was asking who there he says who which ordinary man knows the mind of christ that he can even instruct him he said we do not qualify to know the mind of christ but by that spirit he says we have the mind of christ we have access something that men cannot have the ability to hold the thoughts the feelings the purposes of his heart men rise in this kingdom through the mysteries that they know men rise in this kingdom your life and my life is not just going to rise just because of our education as good as it is your life is not going to rise just by the informations there are things in your life the answer is not in any book on earth there are things there are solutions in your life that need to come that there is no other way of accessing it i show you a system that was created in the kingdom for our glorification 
someone met me one time a gentleman and he said he works in the bank and he said they gave them an assignment to bring a particular target me too when i had that amount i said haba where is this guy a thief where is he going to go and raise that kind of money within one month or whatever let me tell you there are things in your life you stand and look at this mountain you do everything you know to do it will not move at that level you stop trying you allow the spirit of god remember i told you the mind of god is a compendium of infinite wisdom i dare to tell you there is an answer to every question it just depends on who tells you the answer there is an answer the bible is full of men women people who they, do you know do you know i believe with all my heart that it was part of this hidden wisdom that guided solomon to give a thousand bond offering yes he loved the lord but that kind of thing cannot be normal it's not just no it's not just a, will you carry a thousand bond no solomon there is a formula to get what you are looking for and it directed him and he did something that was foolish and god came he said you called me he didn't say you slaughtered animal you called me i'm here solomon what should i do for you and solomon said so this thing works ah look at the kinds of instructions that would come you guys are not going to win oh. why you are not circumcised ah, what is the relationship between my being circumcised and holding a knife i am a warrior the angel said you can go and fight and die like a chicken i've told you the force that controls this result is your circumcision not your sword so if you want to win circumcise everybody imagine the enemies watching men sit down for seven days they can't walk they can't move he said what's wrong with these people warriors he said a, a ghost came and said we can't win your knife is sharp but you are not circumcised and he said you cannot win david went and carried five stones does that make sense to you carried five stones to kill a giant when he came and stood before goliath Goliath said, Abba, David, me? I know I will kill you, but at least respect me. Am I a dog? Is he a dog that you are chasing? He didn't know that that thing was a mystery. There's nowhere where stone was carried to kill anybody except the one that the angels use hailstone to kill people. A mystery was revealed to that young boy and he stood before goliath with his foolishness and arrogance and took his head down used his knife cut it and gave it to the birds that one experience brought him a wife he became tax free are we together his family was exempted from all and he was given great wealth and honor say the deep things of god Say it again, the deep things of God. Let me tell you this. You know why I'm teaching you this? Because there are many people who believe just because you prophesy and say in the name of Jesus, enter a new dimension, everything will change about their lives. Most men of God will want you to believe that just because they prophesy, everything will change. There are answers that must come to you from heaven by yourself. That you go to bed in the night and wake up with something that works for only you nobody who applies what was revealed to you that it will work for it was sent from heaven for you are you getting what i'm saying now i don't mean to be disrespectful but you can get up and see just because you don't see koinonia posters around you now go and then don't produce poster too for you is copy and you find out that no people say i don't know what you are doing you didn't inform me i said ah, but how are they doing it here they are not just doing it here it was received that's why it's working and you mean you were there when i told you god gave me the solution for the spreading of koinonia messages is there i came and told him i said god has given me the answer no selling videos no packaging anything put it online and the lord said he will give it wings that was the instruction the hidden wisdom for our glory look the blessing that the lord has brought today because of the ability to access the deep things of god
brothers and sisters imagine other things that can happen to your life imagine how the god can end that mockery in your family overnight by one encounter with the wisdom of god do a b c and you stand up foolishly and do it and that's the end of it do you believe what i'm telling you listen there are there are families that are suffering that even welfare can't help them no matter how you give to them the the level of trouble in that family is such that even one destiny helper cannot be able to help them because the need is recurrent it's not one time if they eat today there's no hope 11 people nobody is educated nobody went to school nobody can do any business they are all old brother you need something that is not in this earth this is a message of hope this is a message of hope young men listen to me if you don't access this you will never be established in your life i promise you fifty thousand per month will not establish you for life i give you a guarantee go and put your money in the bank and get five percent per annum and let me see how much in 10 years that's 50 percent and see how much that will help to build your life most successful people will never tell you everybody knows what he did in the secret you are just seeing the result a man gets up from nowhere and builds an estate they call it favor but they won't tell you the dynamics your favor is real i testify your favor is real your goodness is real i testify your goodness is real your goodness is real i testify let me tell you this in one of the days of the seven days prayer and fasting i went to the lord and i prayed a simple prayer and i went to bed now this this these are occurrences that happen to me all the time i was i woke up in the night and usually i go to bed there was no light and i woke up and found out someone had on my lamp my lamp physically now these are experiences that happen to me all the time opened my lamp and then i saw no not this book another one opened and a biro there i i know because i knew the moment i see this i know god wants to speak to me and i just said lord i'm ready to write and one two three four god just brought something to my life i said that's it god whatever it is you have done for me i rejoice forever i cried for over one hour seven days prayer and fasting i said my god my god brothers and sisters if your eyes is not open from heaven you will not see if your ears are not open from heaven you cannot hear a man can receive nothing except it is given to him you hear me tell you this a man can you hear me just prophesy and say in the name of jesus it's not just what i'm speaking there is something i receive that is released through what i'm saying that creates the effect when i said the it's not just because i'm anointed everybody operates by the secrets that are working in their life hallelujah I share this thing with you because I want God to surprise you that you can see this a family that have no business buying a car they don't know nothing about finances they can access something and in two weeks all of them are on their knees saying God what is this where did this one come from listen the Bible says it was meant for our glorification not our shame God does not lift men to bring shame to their lives we don't know his system it's a mystery that Paul used think how many times they tried to kill Paul think how many times they tried to do whatever they would do with Paul there is no such thing as hopelessness for any man once you are alive 
you are only hopeless until the mystery leaves heaven and gets to you that's why the prince of Persia fought the information not the angel no don't get this to daniel if daniel receives this something will happen let me tell you that fight was not old testament fight that fight is a fight that happens every time something is leaving heaven and coming to you satan will he knows that one thing that will he sent a word to jacob and it lighted upon israel he sent a word to one lady and it changed the story of our generation that nobody in your family rises to a level and all of a sudden something enters you and you just turn and let me tell you i can know what has entered you by the results that follow these things eh? Take your eyes away from physical things. When God gave me this, physical things are remote controlled. Forget all these things you desire. It's not by chasing them. There is a central control button in life, I guarantee you, that brings you these things. One of it is this physical results. You have seen it happen in this ministry. You have seen it again and again. No man can do these things except God be with him. I'm saying this to you because the reality of the death of Christ is useless until your life brings glory to your family. We keep mocking ourselves as Christians, going everywhere. Jesus died for me. I am born again. There is nothing that symbolizes glory, not in our lives, not in the life of anybody. Every unsaved person is still unsaved. There is something you and God can do that will make the hardened sinner in your family within two weeks you will come one night and hear him listening to a message from your phone you say sorry sir this is a christian message you say you don't know what happened to me you just leave me quietly you just know that god has come to your family something you did called for his help and he came hallelujah you hear that lady one point hand is touched changes to four points you try it and see if it will change it's not the hand it's the mystery it's not the hand so most people just think oh i will just confess just because the bible says to speak and in the name of jesus i decree and declare oh receive this and you find out nothing happens because you see it is what supports what you are saying not just the speech itself you may not know but your results begin to show first you would think it's a coincidence so you are not sure you are even afraid of the result but then you see that it becomes predictable predictable ah, ah. someone blessed Sam today in the evening someone blessed him next tomorrow someone blessed him next tomorrow someone blessed him and you find out that no this this is not so your little church one member comes then the next in five people come you see somebody who say I'm a keyboardist my friend is a drummer the Lord just led us to your church say no but this can't be a coincidence I've been in ministry for 10 years no there is no coincidence everything is intentionally calculated even the disappearance of favor from your family was intentionally programmed it will take something from the spirit listen there are some of us here you graduated with a third class let's tell ourselves the truth if it is in this Nigeria there is no human being who is going to employ you ordinarily i'm not making you scared there are some of us who what we have studied with all humility what we have studied that value is not celebrated nor needed in nigeria it's the truth there are some of us because of the tribes we come from there are wicked men that sit in positions in this country and make sure they frustrate you there are some of us even if you collect salary the 10 other people in your family who need you to eat will make that salary look like 10 naira you need to access these mysteries are we together you need to access these mysteries i will show you how Oh God, I'm grateful. Oh God, I'm grateful. Oh God, I'm grateful. Time will tell whether we are just talkatives 
or dispensers of the mysteries of the kingdom time will tell whether what you are receiving is a cunningly devised fable or is a programming that will make you surprised at your own life that somebody will look at you and say i know you are a villager you say you you insulted me for 30 years but i found something that in six months brought glory to my life that you will bring the gospel to your family you bring the not just the gospel you are able you may be the last born but this thing does not do with age whoever can get the holy spirit to bring you something from the mind of god you will change your life understand this you see all these manifestations that happen it's not just the anointing you see let me tell you something with when you catch a spiritual mystery there is an effect of that understanding on your environment you see that so every time people come under that circumference they're even without directly receiving it they become benefactors of that experience it's true if you have a vision and you see an angel now anyone within that vicinity will benefit there are others that opening of that portal insight will come to them they were not praying just because you open the portal someone will benefit from it the prophet opened the eyes of another person he never said do you have faith do you believe because he could see someone's eyes open But the natural man the man who is scientific the man who laughs at anything that is of god the man who looks at all these things and say look let me tell you i i went to harvard business school i'm a smart man i know everything about economy i i went to so 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 business school nothing is wrong with that i did this and that look i'm a smart gentleman i got this and that the bible says those kinds of people to them when you are talking like this they are some of these bloggers that write nonsense and extract messages like this and say look at the rubbish that they are teaching members and another natural man will concur and say yes so they teach people to dance in church they teach people to jump like fools ah religion the opium of the masses i don't know who taught that but what i am telling you is the mystery that men have accessed and produced wonders with you see if this ministry was not successful many of you think you are just talking just because of this is let me tell you something with results results strengthen your message are you hearing this now that's why for many of you no one has received your gospel results defy argument you can argue with a man but you can't argue with results a woman can be barren but when that woman is pregnant it's not water that is in her stomach it's a human being this earth you see is like a computer game whoever has the control button will make nonsense of satan in this earth there are things i have learned that have surprised me how satan hid this thing from the church and those who access these things are those who do witchcraft and scientology and all of this so the condition is they initiate you into those devilish things they say come they put incisions they do all kinds of occult groups and then they show you something that has always been there always been there you sell your soul to the devil for money you sell your soul but and, it, and you know we preachers insult people why sell your soul but hunger was it no hunger that took Israel to Egypt? If they were satisfied, they would not go. There was hunger and they all went. Hunger is still taking men to Egypt. We must be able to find a system to make Goshen fruitful so that they don't need to go to Egypt. Don't sit down and tell people, uh, why, why are you doing this? Why will you go and sleep with a man to get uh, a job? Can you, do you know the mystery that can give the sister the job? Come, let me pray for you except i'm a man of god you will get a job in two weeks five years she has not gotten the job and she just says don't mind this guy my family is dying there and this arrogant pastor wants to leave me in pain 
but happy are you brothers and sisters that you can look at a man and enter a family and they said look look at us sorry we're embarrassed there is nothing to eat our father is about leaving jesus christ and saying that by next week he's going to go to a herbalist in the village and you say daddy give me 24 hours something will happen in this house give me 24 hours and the man says you are a young boy we did all this jesus thing those days in boys brigade he said no problem i agree with you sir just allow me and within 24 hours something happens and the man calls you and says sorry i don't understand I'm, I'm a proud man i usually don't talk to small boys but sit down and you tell him jesus is still the way jesus is still the la truth jesus is still the life how about that my herbalist leave him i brought you the reality he said he gave it for our glory listen hear me church if we trivialize the desperation of men to see the glory of god in their life we will lose our members to occultists did you hear what i said any pastor any prophet any apostle any man of god that trivializes the importance of the members experiencing the glory of god i guarantee you a day will come our young men our keyboardists will go to shrines because they must eat they must become they will become herbalists our ladies will go and fraternize with the gates of hell we will be there jumping on stage dispensing all kinds of things there are things that pertain to life and godliness not just godliness to life your child must go to school to life your child can be born again and not be educated and as a result your child will become a slave to every other person there are some of us everyone in your family works for someone they distribute them to go and be slaves you are 10 in your family nobody can stand alone you go and help this uncle wash his car you Abba. your goodness is real i testify your goodness is real your kindness is real i testify hallelujah look at someone like kenny look at this gentleman i i don't mean to make him feel bad his dad has gone to be with the lord his mother has gone to be with the lord everybody that can help him in life has gone he's on his own it's easy for a preacher who has food in his house to run your mouth and say you will make it and leave this gentleman by the time he suffers his sister is crying everybody is crying this guy will get into gambling he will get into occultism he will get into every kind of demonic thing that's what we are, we are losing our members in church because they are not seeing the reality the validity of what the word says we are losing our ladies to ungodly people we are losing our gentlemen our fathers are becoming herbalists covenanting generations in shrines because hunger is taking them to egypt i will never preach a god who is not alive it's a vow i made right from when god called me I will preach a God that can be proven here and now that he is not only the saver of souls he's the lifter of men he's the anointer of men he's the revealer of secrets I love you too much some of you as you are hearing me now you check your phone and you see missed calls from your loved ones we have not eaten for three days please if you're a man of God here let's take people seriously let's not just be acting games with people's destinies I bring you good news there is a way out there is a way out there is a way out we have orphans in this place we have widows in this place we have widowers in this place it's not their fault that they could not be educated do you blame a child was it his fault you see a woman of 60 years with her two children there is no physical hope of any breakthrough they are the ones who give us offerings and we collect as men of God. They are the ones who carry their last money and kneel down and give us. Our job is to collect and eat. Let me tell you, God will soon start punishing us men of God who are collecting people's offering and not giving them the truth that will lift them. After service, I can stand here and some of you will carry your last money and come and give me and I will collect and go back. Woe betide me if I don't teach you the truth. It's not fair we keep destroying people's destinies 
in the name of church look at how many young men sit down and they are asking man of god you are established me i'm not show me now so that both the sower and the reaper will rejoice but i keep telling you you just keep sowing in my life and sit down there while i am enjoying it as i'm talking to you now my food is ready some of you you love god but right where you are there is no food for you to eat how long will this continue we say it's easter jesus died he conquered satan oh dead where is your sting we mock ourselves in church and the only people who rejoice are the men of god your goodness is real i testify your goodness is real your goodness is real i testify listen gentlemen let me teach you something there are things you can learn you will bring one song one song not ten songs nobody rises as a result of a full album there is one song that comes from there is the one you compose that your worship teammates will clap for you and with it they will invite you to two or three ministrations and you go back as usual but there is one that comes from the throne you will sit down and hear them playing it in africa and you will mint money as if you are a charmer and god says that's not the issue i'm just proving to you that everything from above is above all there are some of you there's one idea that this mystery can bring you go and meet someone and say sir this is it and the person says because of this come i will read the bible look at modern history and see people's lives change when you hear some of the songs that he'll song right look at the young guys they are not even neatly dressed you know that this one is the grace of god upon a vessel you ask them to compose songs by themselves and see the rubbish they will write there are music artists in this nation we all know where they got their songs from it does not make sense and it has blessed them that's to tell you there is a force that is not human you listen to it you can't stop something in it draws you most of us write songs you carry a paper and a biro and sit down with the consciousness of the hunger that is in front of you and you just find a scripture where will i lift up my eyes two times I will say amen I will say amen the Lord be praised two times it will never never sell not in this kingdom if if listen you are laughing I'm very serious with what I'm saying if it is God's result it must come from him there are pastors that love God doing everything they were taught in Bible school but it's not working because the forces that keep men down the forces that keep men down can only be dislodged by an intelligence that is not earthly as for me joshua selman i have made my choice that this is how i'm going to live my life my life is too risky to be human this the earth is too wicked for me to live just as a human being i must live as a divine being because it is he that cometh from above that is above all are we together we have doctors here if you follow the normal course the thing they are doing in shika you will never really rise because one day you will see somebody who will look at you and say dr david i know you are qualified dr halima but because you are not from my village i sit on your destiny i am professor this and that and he says all right sir you go back and engage this mystery and come out and in his presence he will sign you as you are rising tomorrow he will come in the dedication of a foundation and he just ah that is a is my own i wanted to tell you that i didn't stop rising after all of your mockery my god is still alive listen don't you dare laugh at any man that understands what i'm saying they may carry their 200 naira trouser and surprise you I bring you a message of hope brothers and sisters this storm that rage over our families will not rage forever there is a way out this is that there is a way out there is a way out the way out is to be able to access this hidden mystery now sit down let me explain to you the last thing and then we'll pray Hallelujah. pray 
I'm already seeing an electric cable sparking. Is what I'm seeing in the spirit. Hallelujah. The overflow by the roadside. There's someone receiving a healing anointing. That overflow, overflow two now. There's someone receiving a healing anointing. A healing anointing. That's what I'm saying. A healing anointing. It will be by the Spirit. You may not be a preacher, but you are receiving it. And it will change your life. Oh, what business can lift me? Let me try this. Let me try that. And you keep crying. You access this mystery. And you are sitting down. And here it comes. And your life rises and changes. I know a woman years ago. She she got into Coca-Cola business. And the only reason why she got into Coca-Cola business was because she was just sitting down according to what she told me. And it was like a vision. And she saw a like a what they call this thing. This thing they buy. Container. And she was bringing Coca-Cola from it. Immediately she knew that this was where my prosperity was. You see why many of us keep trying things and wasting our time. You are trying. You need to receive. God knows where your money is. Your money is not everywhere. It is in the place directed. Geography matters when it comes to do prosperity. Isaac sowed in that land. And the woman started it mysteriously. Help started coming for her. And that was how this woman rose up. Do you know, when I spoke with this woman, from what I know about financial intelligence, I, I saw how unfair life can be for such a woman to be prospering. I think the only thing that woman may know is just how to count money and all of that. But just because she was directed, the Lord is my shepherd. And so I shall not want. Hallelujah. The character of this kind of prayer, listen carefully. Let me tell you the difference between praying in tongues, the prayer language for your spiritual building, your edification, and the prayer that is for reception. Number one, when you pray this kind of prayer, listen, the kind of prayer that receives is not a prayer that is done with aggression. Your mind has to be alert. Listen carefully. I'm giving you, there are certain kinds of prayer that the power of God comes upon you. You are praying in tongues. You must exert energy because of the gravity of what is happening in the spirit. These tongues, these tongues you see, is the kind of tongues that as you are communicating, God allows your mind to still be alert because something is happening. As you are activating certain things, ideas are coming. It's not just the kind of tongues that you go to the forest alone and you are shouting. This one, you are praying, you are receiving. Something is coming from heaven for you to receive. Your mind must be alert as you pray. Your mind must be alert as you pray. It's not every kind of prayer that your mind is alert. There are times you are just praying. Sometimes you are not even yourself. Five hours will pass, you don't know. Because there is a dimension. But when you are praying to activate this mystery, your mind must be alert to receive that which God is bringing. Number two, listen. Everything received must be documented or preserved immediately because of the nature of how spiritual things are listen carefully spiritual things are very volatile you can lose a spiritual information in five minutes and it will take the grace of god to receive sometimes it can be a vision that vision you can't understand it immediately so you find a way of preserving it my phone is full of voices of encounters sometimes i'm praying and the things i'm seeing i start recording it immediately because i know if this thing sleeps it may not come back again I, is somebody getting this now most of you when these kinds of things happen you say no problem let me finish my three hours prayer and it leaves never comes again that was a five years breakthrough that just disappeared in one strategy. 
you see why prophets were writers when i'm praying i pray with my books my bible is on my hand my phone everything because there are times i will need to draw there are times i will need to quickly write there are times i will need to record i get up in the morning i i found out that sometimes writing is too slow how many of you have gotten up and you literally had seconds to preserve something seconds if it escapes that second sometimes when god is merciful to you he will draw you to start praying you think you are just praying you are repeating the same thing and there the dream comes again are we together let me tell you something i have gotten information in pieces that the complete picture came within the span of three years spiritual things are very strange you can get one part you need to preserve it because you will need that part the other part will come december the next year and then the last piece comes january when you piece three of them together they equate a dimension of breakthrough that your life will never recover from so when you are praying these kinds of prayer you can go to the place of prayer knowing that my purpose of prayer is to receive a strategy i'm going there lord i'm going to receive and all of a sudden you are praying you are praying you are alert you are alert there are sometimes in the midst of your prayer you will find out that the grace to pray supposedly lifts you can't pray again don't just get up and say it's a demonic attack be silent his voice is coming something is coming most of us don't understand these dynamics of prayer there are times you are praying and you just feel like sitting down somewhere help them please and you just sit down somewhere quietly like a zombie you are even afraid because you don't want people to think that you came and you were joking you see the mistake we make when we get to the place of prayer we just shut the door and make sure everybody around is hearing us to justify our spirituality we are cheating ourselves of dimensions there are times you can go to prayer and for two hours nobody has heard you you've not even started the prayer you are sitting down and for two hours you are like a librarian dictating mysteries that you yourself don't understand one day god will say remember what i told you go to your book page 75 check the last column that's the answer for what you are looking for there are times that i've gone to make reference to books things i wrote 2008 2009 i just remember i've seen this image somewhere and god says remember i go and look for the book i remember when koinonia was going to start that's when i remembered that God had revealed that thing to me 2005 I now when I was searching the book immediately I opened I saw everything revealed verbatim do you believe what I'm sharing with you we are going to pray many of us lose it listen to me every time you stand before a challenge and you want to pray don't just go and wail oh God you too you know how we are if you don't arise you can cry you can do everything you want to do but the moment you pray do you know many times you will see your prayer alternating you know that the last 30 minutes was warfare the next 30 minutes is not warfare that that prayer they all have their characteristics you can know that i was praying for two hours but the last 20 minutes of that prayer is this one is is a serious warfare what is happening you thought that after two hours it will go and all of a sudden a grace for prayer comes again and you can push through another two hours there are times you go to pray you cannot even reach 20 minutes if you are not careful you will think you are backsliding it is the context of the communication of the spirit religion is a dangerous thing it will destroy your prayer life there are times i've sat down to pray from morning till evening and i'm unable to say a word highest worship is just playing i want to get up and maybe the only thing i can say in that prayer session is thank you jesus thank you jesus i give you all the praise thank you jesus here it comes i'm writing thank you jesus okay teach these people this thank you jesus your people don't understand this thank you jesus the way to go about this is to do a b c d thank you jesus okay don't worry i will reveal to you the answer during leaders meeting thank you jesus they that are led by the spirit of god you see 
when you understand what I'm teaching you you will not only command signs and wonders your life will be a sign and a wonder we win in life by strategies if Naomi never went to the farm of Boaz she would never marry marriageable but no strategy if the walls of Jericho the people carried their sword and tried to bring down that gate they would have slaughtered them like chickens just the arrows from the watchmen would kill them and destroy them it takes strategies to win you have dreams where is the strategy when I meet pastors they tell me their message but they don't tell me the strategy God said go and raise me a people where do you think these people are and how are you going to fulfill that mandate A friend called me and he said um, I should advise him is it right wonderful friend that I love he said is it right for him to continue raising offering in church I said well I don't have a problem with it but go and find out how God designed the finances of your ministry to run go and pray and receive a strategy do you know the challenge with the body of Christ we copy everything without thinking about it we copy if I start rolling this um, um, what do you call it my trouser now here I do it for two weeks as foolish as it is of course I know it's because you love me and you believe in the word of the Lord upon me you will be surprised how somebody will go for a lecture with trouser rolled like that he will never ask and say sorry is it an instruction that is followable or is a unique dealing or you, you are, your leg is just paining you and you think you are doing this we copy everything and sometimes to our detriment. Are we blessed? I want you to get results. You have to be at alert. You have to be focused. You have to be discerning. One of the ways that we engage these kinds of tongues is to write down all the issues of concern and pray while you look at it there is a relationship between your eyes and the realm of the spirit this eye is not just for looking you can write these things house rent god what is the way out are we together now ministry is not growing i'm trusting you for the healing anointing i've read everything i know what is the way out you are walking around and you just allow the Holy Spirit to pray through you. All of a sudden, you will just get an idea. Go down to Zaria. See Apostle, let him lay hands on you. You see, you think that that thing just came. There is no other man of God you will meet, no matter how anointed, that will impart that healing anointing because the instruction is already tied to a vessel. Sometimes it may not even be to see a man of God. There are graces when I wanted, God led me to specific people and places. I remember, I've shared some of them with you. We just do things at random. No divine direction. Hallelujah. I will never forget one day I was asking God a very serious question about ministry. And all of a sudden, literally, as if, as if a force came, my hands were shaking. And before you knew it, I still don't know the name that I typed. A YouTube video. Enter. And all of a sudden, one old, old gray Baba just appears like this with one 25 minutes message. And I listened to it. That message changed my life. I searched for other videos. The, the message did not even finish, but it contained my answer. Hallelujah. Are you blessed? You have to learn this if you must rise there are two ways to rise in life hustle if you want to keep moving around and knocking or go to God and say my God show me the way show me the way God can help men oh koinonia hear me my God can help men this trial and error we are doing with our lives is too much sometimes the injury that will come from trying may not allow you to try another day again so the key is to be circumspect access the deep things of god 
if you're naming tonight's message then it's, it's titled accessing the deep things of god i'm giving you a secret this is what i do with my life lord i thank you sometimes a scripture is coming sometimes the voice of god comes for you sometimes a mystery comes sometimes an instruction comes you see that god can give you all kinds of foolish instructions let me tell you do you know there was a day i do this every once in a while but there was a day god instructed me i was just lying down i i wasn't asleep and i was praying and all of a sudden i just sensed the anointing and all of a sudden the spirit of god told me stand up and lie down flat on the ground like get up from your bed oh, and lie imagine if somebody opened my door he said this is it I've, I've i've always known that this guy there is something occultic he's doing and you would think as i lie down i will feel one ghost i saw nothing i had nothing i lay down like that for about maybe 20 minutes honestly speaking i even started sleeping small and later the voice just came go to bed go and sleep the next meeting that we went i can't remember where i saw a dimension of the grace of god that i couldn't understand i said what happened and god told me while you were lying down your something was happening to you you don't have to feel it you believe it god is not a fool this is how some of you can be there lord who is going to be my helper and god says come out in front of your house and just stand for 15 minutes the natural man lord what i'm, I'm educated and you stand there 10 minutes somebody passes and say ah promise are you all right he say, i'm fine of course you can't tell them it's god that's making you a fool like that and all of a sudden sometimes the 15 minutes will even finish and nothing will happen and you just feel disappointed and you go back say god this is what you did god is watching your aptness to obeying him one day you will be sleeping in the night and by 2 a.m god will say call pastor alpha just call and tell him what is the message ah god how do i call a married man by 2 a.m god will say do it immediately you call he say i was just about to call you here is the message for you the place is uyo not lagos that's all i saw in my dream look believers you need to be dynamic when you are just straightforward and religious there is no breakthrough the operations of the spirit is like the wind you can't tell where it's coming or where it's going so is one who is led of the spirit there are people here who came from lagos because they were praying lord what do i do with my life and god says stand up come to zaria they can't tell you exactly why they are here that's why when you ask them those questions it's difficult for them to answer they don't want to look like they are stupid sometimes they themselves think they are stupid but keep watching god there is a mystery walking out then you will see the glory and the beauty why will god tell you to leave lagos this gentleman left ghana and came help that lady i said lagos and truly truly she fell under the anointing praise someone gets up and is enjoying oil money in portacot and god says stand up and go and do two weeks in zamfara another person can be living where there is an oil well and be dying whereas his money is in sokoto as dry and harsh as the weather is your prosperity is where the voice of god is for you not greener pastures is not a location greener pastures is a realm where the voice of the spirit directs you there are people any other place you go you will not prosper you will prosper in zaria someone will come in zaria and be wondering what is in this place the only thing i saw was just a few shops here but a direction for you every lifting in this ministry and every greatness god has brought happen right here because we could access these mysteries are you ready to pray we are going to pray sit down you are not going to stand up sit down listen you are just going to play these instruments for me just lightly and then I just want you to pray don't shout and mm -mm, just take out time you just pray in the spirit right take out time and pray in the spirit and you will be surprised to be sensitive to what God will be doing 
for some as you are praying what you'll be receiving is impartation some as you are praying you will not even know what is happening to you not every information must be communicated in words some truths are imparted just do what i'm telling you to do don't worry about those shouting pray in the spirit thank you jesus everywhere inside outside you just pray spirit shalabata kate predikiti baladaba jagate belekete baladaba show us the secrets of our life oh god show us the way out let it come from heaven some of you are receiving things just because your mind is not understanding it you watch and see what happens to you a few days from now what you have received will start being revealed to you and you will see that this is what happened in koinonia oh, 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 oh. Oh. Lord, what is the way out for my business? What is the way out for my family? Lord, what is the secret to addressing this barrenness? Lord, what level of unction do I need for this ministry? Why is it not growing? Lord, why is my family stagnated? Why are the works of my hands challenged? Send me help from Zion, O God. just pray koinonia we are soaking in the glory everyone pray in the spirit lord why is my cgpa refusing to rise what must i do i have studied i've done my best go ahead pray lord what do i need to do where is my finances oh god where is it where is the key to the next level what is the formula for my establishment lord how will you bail my family out do i just meet anybody should i meet a particular helper if yes what is the name who is the helper is he in zaria is she in zaria do i need to go out of zaria lord what is the thing is my ministry in zaria is it in nigeria where is it where is my breakthrough? Pray, show me the secrets of my destiny. Go ahead, we're not wasting our time, I, I guarantee you. The Bible says the natural man, the natural man, some of you in the silence like the dew of Hammon, ideas begin to come that poultry is my will for you don't stop it that public speaking you are about to give up but it is where your finances is don't stop it looks like your church is not growing but you are called you just need an upgrade of the anointing answers coming from heaven spirit of the lord we ask you search for us the deep things search the mind of god concerning our destinies concerning our families concerning our ministries concerning our homes lord where will this budget money come from there is no human way 
it is going to come but i know that thou art the fountain of wisdom it is in your light that we see light show me show me open my eyes i am tired of doing what everybody is doing i'm tired of failing like everyone i'm tired of saying yes to just anybody open my eyes show me pray just three or four more minutes lord where is the anointing where is the place you want me to be meeting with you for prayer is it my room or do i need to go out of my house every night what is the timing what is my time of receiving revelation from you is there a unique time you want to give me from 12 to 2 every day is it a time you are giving me it may not be so for everybody but what time have you allocated for my visitation do i need to fast once every day do i need to go on a drive fast what do i need to do do i need to dance for seven days show me oh god there has to be a way out why are my heavens closed why do i fast and pray and yet nothing happens why are the nine graduates in my family jobless show me then the secret was revealed unto daniel and daniel blessed the god of heaven Two more minutes, go ahead and pray. Open my mind, open my mind, open my mind. There is a way out. There is a way to the wealthy place. There is a way to the anointing. There is a way to influence. There is a way to access the mysteries of the kingdom. There is a path which no foul knoweth. The wealth of the lion has not trodden there. Show me, oh God, these mystery paths in the spirit these virgin dimensions in the spirit that mortal men cannot dare tread open my eyes oh god like a two-edged sword and let me see the path here marked for my destiny Hello, Kim Madonna. Eba la katabara katabashada baladadia. Eke taya. Hello, Kim Madonna. 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 Just be silent, everyone. Just be silent. Just be as silent as you can. Wherever you are, just be silent. The Lord is putting something in your spirit. Be still and know. Be still and receive. Be still and hear. Be still and enter. Be still and you will know. Just be silent for two or three minutes. God is doing something in your life. Answers coming as words, as impartations. Be still. Some of you, God will be saying, don't waste your time in that direction. That's not the path for your life. Don't waste your time. Be still.
some of you God will be telling you the change will not come in one day just be patient I will visit your family but it will take time please be patient just be patient with me a few minutes and we're done be patient answers are coming think on your business while you are standing think on your family while you are standing think on your ministry while you are standing answers are coming from the throne coming from the throne God is telling you I will raise help for you it will not be with your resources that you will make this happen the helpers are coming the helpers are coming the helpers are coming this sickness is not unto death this sickness is not unto death I will give thee health and cure it is true that the healing ministry is my will for you it is true that the healing ministry is my will for you it is true that the healing ministry is my will it is true that the healing for you in ministry the healing ministry you will walk in it it is true that the healing ministry is Just be patient. I see sparks of light. It's a picture of illumination. You are receiving something in your spirit. God is giving some of us clarity. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands and I pray for you by the message of God that the same way God sends me insight by the angel of his presence, I pray for you. Whatever alignment your spirit must take, to not only hear his voice, but receive of the impulses from the throne. I make this happen for you now. In the name of Jesus, I make this happen for you now. Whatever position your ears must take in the spirit, your eyes must take in the spirit, to clear up the blurry visions, to make sure that the speakings are clear. I pray for you in the name of Jesus may the grace the spirit of grace make this happen for you even in this Islam supernatural ideas innovative ideas supernatural strategies the strategies that force things to work some of you this week will not be over until you begin to see the fruits of superior wisdom this week will not be over until you see things that will marvel you happening by the spirit of god manifesting by the finger of god you will apply the things that you are receiving and you will watch it work it was not supposed to work but because it came by his voice you will see it rise i say to you you will see it rise i speak to you that you will see it rise before the miracle service on Friday some of you will only come for Thanksgiving because before then that which you have received from heaven will work like fire will work like fire listen there are some of you the next meeting you will go for as a man of God you will be surprised to see the dimension of the operation of the gifts of the spirit you will go for your meetings and God will give you epochal revelations. You will command the realm of the spirit at your beck and call in dimensions that you will be afraid of. And that one experience will open the doors of finances, open the doors of ministry, increase membership, bring increase for you.
listen there is a reign of wealth and prosperity that is coming upon this ministry you hear me as i speak i don't just talk about money just because no 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 there is a reign r-a-i-n of a dimension i have seen this thing many times in my visions a dimension all these miracle alerts are just messages do you know why because god wants to establish men fast to give us room to serve him there is a dimension i want you to write it write it down that there is a dimension brothers and sisters you will see things happen to men you now see that will surprise you i know this by the spirit one of the impartations that we are coming to receive on friday is this grace for financial exploits please believe it i'm not apologetic about it because we need it your heavenly father knows there are families that must come to just cry and say god if you leave us to ourselves we may not reach the end of this year i'm rounding up a precious woman one wonderful kaduna family that i love so much they left to church this morning while service was going on in this area thieves came and buckled their house because of the financial squalor you can imagine people now live and go for work they went to church they were praying whereas robbers buckled their house packed everything that can be carried pigs whatever i mean carried them um, i don't know they didn't give me the details of what they carried they entered came and saw their house scattered because of the wickedness of satan let me tell you this a spiritual demarcation has been made over this ministry and everyone connected from this grace you are totally exempted from this financial wickedness it's no longer poverty it's warfare there is a spirit behind it to make sure believers are rubbish to become nonsense to make sure pastors become beggars to make sure nothing is discussed in church again no salvation message only money message to make sure that people never rise that the only thing that happens in church is money and raising seeds the spirit of poverty please i want you to come on friday with your heart open we are praying for the sick but some of this let's trust god to make this thing happen in our lives but you mark my word koinonia what is about to happen to men and women god has seen your heart you will see the sudden liftings of men by divine strategies i saw it in that vision people helping themselves and it's like a chain reaction within a short period of time rising in a way that is enviable he made this for our glory father we give you praise tonight we respect your authority in this house we respect what you are doing we take you seriously and we believe you thank you oh god for showing us tonight a system for accessing the deep things of god i pray oh god that you will grant us grace that as we pray this prayer we receive deep things from the kingdom and that grace be supplied to walk in the instructions thereof lord i am asking you to lift everyone lift everyone connected to this vision first lift us spiritually oh god let no one be weak in this place let no one be small in this place oh god let your sons and daughters be men and women of fire and insight and then i pray oh god that the things that pertain unto life you will give us the thing the issues of life may they be solved once and for all that we may have the time to serve you and declare your praises to the nations we thank you we receive it by faith and we declare that this is our experience in the name of jesus christ apostle i want to give my life to jesus christ keep standing everybody i love him with all my heart but seeing what he has done tonight it is a call 
for me to run to him you're here inside outside overflow one two three by the roadside online you are saying man of god i want to run to jesus i have seen that this is the way i want my life to be or you are here you are saying apostle i've handed my life to jesus but i want to rededicate my life i want to take him seriously because he is my life wherever you are please make sure you run here overflow outside overflow one and two you can come in join those inside overflow three for time's sake just walk to your projector stand please do this quickly wherever you are god bless you god bless you thank you for your courage my brother thank you my sister god bless you i see you coming make sure you don't sit back i love you jesus keep coming quickly i worship and adore you just want to tell you that i love you more than anything are you coming please make your way very quickly i love you jesus appreciate them as they come I worship and adore you Just want to tell you That I love you More than anything One more time, I believe somebody still needs to come and join them I love you Jesus I worship and adore you Just want to tell you Those in front and those at overflow three and those online all of you please say this after me come join them darling quickly say lord jesus say it from the depth of your heart say lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe you love me i believe you gave your heart your life to set me free tonight I receive of your life I receive righteousness I receive all that you have done for me and I declare that I am a child of God the life of God is in my spirit I declare that you are my Lord now and forever I declare that the spirit of the living God comes into my life tonight and he's with me forever thank you jesus let me pray for you father thank you for these precious people they have come in honor of the call that you have made over their lives and destinies lord preserve them validate this declaration that they have made by faith by granting them access to the spirit of truth the one who can search the mind of the father i pray that you make their lives beautiful Produce the garden of Eden out of every wilderness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now thank you so much gentlemen. I want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. All of you please go ahead follow him. Appreciate them as they do so. Same thing for those at Overflow 3. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for your patience. Um, just give me a few minutes. Three, five minutes and we're done this is your first time worshiping with us aside from those going out your first time here at koinonia um it's a special service we're doing it on sunday usually our services are fridays but um aside from overflow three if you're here overflow one two and inside you're most welcome please make your way to the front it's my joy and honor to welcome you very personally please appreciate all those worshiping with us for the first time god bless you God bless you. Come boldly. Come boldly. Make your way. Please clear the way for them outside those who are coming. Some of you have come from very, very far. Some of you have come from within town. You are most welcome. All those following us online in whatever nation of the world, whatever time zone it is there, we love you. We bless the Lord for your life. Thank you so much for connecting with us. The same grace at work here will work in your life. Let's honor them one more time, everyone. Bless you. Bless you.